You guys have caused quite a stir on the internet. Just a little bit. I told us to create a Christian club in Los Angeles and we have gotten so much backlash, y'all. First of all, did God tell you that? God yes. told us yeah. to start <laughs> uh, a Christian yeah. nightclub and we're like, ooh. Yeah. Also, why do you need a Christian nightclub? What is the true intention there? And that's what makes me and I think everyone who is challenging this question whether or not God really told you this. For me, I'm the extrovert party person. Like I was raised in party culture. It was normal to go out to functions and connect with people. Now, when people think of a club, like they're thinking of like gyrating, twerking, yeah. wilding out, right? Yeah. Sorry, I'm just I, trying to help you protect you. Now someone is twerking, someone is wilding, someone uh -huh. is, you know what I mean? Has that happened? Yeah, but just be transparent. I think there was a, there was a girl, a specific girl um, that was <laughs> Bruce Lawn. The conversation of Christian nightclubs has been going viral all over social media. Is it too worldly? Is it a good outreach tool? Do young people need a chance and an opportunity to come together and have a healthy outlet where they're not gyrating and twerking to debaucherous music? Mm. Uh, all of these things we've been talking about on the channel, and I have the privilege of presenting to you guys uh, one of the... I think we can say pioneers in this space. Um, Bryce G is in the house with us today. Yes, sir. What's happening, y'all? What's good? It's Bryce G here for the Lord, for the people. Thank All you right. for having me. All right. So uh, you got to explain the chef attire. I've been seeing people do it. I saw Remy do it. I Ooh. saw Drake do it. I was wondering, yeah. The 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 chef thing you got yeah. on. Maybe people can't notice on camera. So walk nah, me through cool. the fashion uh, uh, and what is this? You just cook. You here to cook? Yeah, it's more than that. It's more than that. Okay. So uh, lower your microphone just a smidge, so it's not you. covering up your face. Yeah, I appreciate you. Oh, <laughs> see, that's how you know I'm a rookie at this. Thank you. There you go. But yeah, thank you. That's why I wear it because it, it pops the question. But it, it symbolizes servitude, okay. hospitality. Okay. When I first became a Christian, my first job was at Waffle House, and when you're a waiter, you you throw on an apron before you serve, and mm. it became a thing symbolically for me because I'm more than a DJ. I'm more of a, a master gatherer, celebration ex expert. And you're, all that. you're a connector of people. I'm a connector of people, and okay. I'm here to serve. So the apron symbolizes that, and also it's cool. Were you doing it before? For Drake and, and some of the other yes. folks doing it? If, okay. you, if you ask my, my crew, the, the people that's following me, they knew what's up. But I still got to give credit to the DJ that did inspire it. I mm -hmm. um, guess I can say his name, Scratch Bastard. Yeah. But um, yeah, he, he would rock aprons, but I don't think it was as symbolic as okay. I, I've made it. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've seen Remy wear it. Um, Wait, is his name Remy? Am I? Am it I might confusing? be. It might be. I've only seen Drake pop no, up no, no, with it it's, recently. It's not. Who's the guy? Oh gosh, it's my daughter's favorite song. The Calm, calm Down, Baby, Calm Down. Oh yeah. Um, his name's not Remy. I think it is Remy. Is it? Dang, I'm gonna sound bad because I'm a DJ. Oh, well, gosh. I don't really. I, don't I play saw his him. Stuff. There's a video of him like in Paris Fashion Week, walking into some restaurant. It's becoming. And a he thing. had like a leather one. Like it was yeah. like a like a thing. Nah. So talk about pioneer. Like I really see it as becoming the next fashion piece. It hasn't okay. been touched like that. I've had some designer pieces by my boy. Elias and uh -huh. Stefan, like we're actually gonna coin it like as one of the main things. I'm gonna start having as merch for the people, like everything. Okay, that's yeah. what's up. All right, and we have your lovely wife here as well. She might be chiming in. Introduce her for yes, the people. Yes, yes. This is the wonderful, lovely, smart, talented, gifted in so many ways, Imani Thompson. Some people know her as Imani G, but yes, my wife and my rib. Hey y'all. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, you guys have caused quite a stir on the internet. Just a little bit. People are, you know, saying, why do young people need to come together and dance? Yeah. Other people are saying, oh, it's a great, it's a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember uh, when I was younger, we would have Christian rap night, right? Yeah. Or or sli uh, what do they call them? Um, Lock-ins, which, yep. were, which were so cringe. And I know. So I know. walk me there. walk me through like why do you believe this is a net positive to have this and how is this different than a Christian rap concert how is this different how is this different from a Christian rap concert outreach night yeah and how is this different from a regular club yeah so the three things or the three crowds I want to like highlight in regards to solution is the artists um, the consumers or the guests that come. And then also other Christian creatives that have a business. Um, what I noticed is there isn't any events that are consistent, um, but also not 
um, I want to say agenda based, but like most churches have a borderline, like a bottom line mission. Like they're trying mm-hmm. to bring people to their church, raise more awareness of a certain topic or exercise their theological muscles and teach about some topics. And those things are great. I just think there's other medians of, of hospitality. And I think hosting those collective groups um, is very important mm. for any community outside of Christianity. Um, I think there's just a, there's just spaces for everybody to come together to, to network and mm-hmm. connect and all that stuff. So I just noticed that there wasn't a neutral but biblically centered space mm-hmm. for people to connect. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of concerts, a lot of church services, a lot of devotional events are pretty linear mm-hmm. and, not, and not in a bad way, but it's like you look at the stage, you see an artist or you see a pastor they provide some type of service for you, whether it's a lesson or entertainment. You go with your friends or you go solo. You enjoy the experience. And then a lot of times people are either leaving right after or they fellowship for a little bit because either the building has a close mm-hmm. or everybody's going to lunch because they're, they're hungry mm-hmm. or they're going for dinner after. Mm-hmm. My event keeps people in that space. It gives them an opportunity to actually not only look to the people next to them, but actually walk around the venue, mm-hmm. connect with other believers in their city. Um being able to support up and coming artists because you're playing the hottest music in the space. You're able to support local businesses that are Christians because it's a Christian like event Mm -hmm. and you're just developing community. You're getting people out of the house Mm -hmm. because obviously pandemic had everybody in a recluse mode, but Mm -hmm. I truly believe this is next up because people desire to get out the house. They just don't know where to start. Mm -hmm. Even me as a social butterfly, Mm -hmm. I was like, trying to think about what was next to connect because I was new to Orlando mm-hmm. uh, 2021 and I was just kind of like, where do I start? Mm-hmm. But these concerts that I would go to was a good start, mm-hmm. but I just needed something consistent. Mm-hmm. A lot of concerts, like I said, are annual. So yeah, I think it just gives people that are new to the city a place to connect and know okay. that, okay, even if I don't know essentially what this person believes in yeah. i know that they're like seeking god yeah so are you guys playing just christian music yes okay. just christian music just i'm playing gospel i'm playing all of it okay all of it but as long as it's worshiping god lyrically it's, it's hidden now when people think of a club like they're thinking of like gyrating twerking yeah wilding out right yeah. that's that's most so how is what you guys do different because when I, the videos i saw looks mm-hmm. like a 90s dance party like yeah. they saw some kid and play <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean people are doing different things people yeah. are doing different things and it doesn't look like a regular club mm-hmm. but there's enough of that element in there yeah so i believe it it ties into the same issue that hip-hop had you know mm-hmm. christian hip-hop when it wasn't popular mm-hmm. when you heard the word hip-hop especially within let's say 90s or 2000 you're thinking nwa you're thinking oh snap they talking about that reckless rebellious stuff that's mm-hmm that's tearing up my records Mm -hmm. you know you're tearing up whatever what people was comfortable with i think people just uh, uh, easily attach words to what they imagine and i'm not on blame them for it so clubs we haven't had a alternative view of it because all we have seen is what we've experienced in the world Mm -hmm. and what we've maybe experienced recently if we've stepped into some of those spaces Mm -hmm. uh but what makes this necessarily different um is the intention um, the intention is the intentions of secular clubs, believe it or not, as reckless as it is, is still hospitality. Mm-hmm. You're, you're meeting needs of mm-hmm. locals and visitors mm-hmm. um, where they're trying to find where the girls at, where, where the drinks at, what's the hottest music. They want to be immersed in the culture. Like before I was a Christian, I would hit up parties to see like, all right, who's out here? Who's hot? Who's not? Like, what's the vibe here? I'm trying to see if this city is like a place I want to be at. Mm-hmm. Um, but the Christians, we don't got that. If you come to Orlando, you're either going to go to church or you're going to go to whatever else the city offers. Mm -hmm. But again, community wise, we don't, we don't have an environment and Mm -hmm. club baseline communicates environment, Mm -hmm. atmosphere, Mm -hmm. community Mm -hmm. uh, of like-minded people. So a lot lot of people say that's just a church, but again, church, an established church, like ministry has their intentions and it's, it's a lot to host a party <laughs> and I don't think a lot of churches see that as a, a, a major focus. So well, like what, what is the difference between a church gathering and, a, and one of these gatherings, right? Because meaning that I feel like a, a good 
church gathering for young adults is going to infuse some of these elements that you're talking about community coming together yeah hospitality so i think of my my pastor pastor jeff mm -hmm. moore's uh he planted a church rhythm church which is where we're members at now but before that he ran a young adults ministry mm -hmm. here in north coast uh church in vista now maybe this was like cutting edge mm -hmm. for what he was doing but they would have <laughs> Uh, a, a service, but it, Sam, outside of that service sandwiched is time to come and gather yep. and hang out. And then after the service, there would be music and food and mm -hmm. appetizers. And so he grew that from, I think, 40 people when he yeah. started. So when he planted the church, there was over 800 mm -hmm. people coming yeah. every single Thursday, right? Mm -hmm. And so it, and now again, maybe Jeff is just the exception to the rule in terms of how we think about room dynamics, environment, having a DJ, having the after party, yeah. all these elements, right? Mm -hmm. So what would be the difference between what you're describing, right? They can come, they can they can be around people, mm -hmm. they can hear worship, they can hear uh, good teaching, yeah. they can meet people. A mm -hmm. lot of folks go to the J and we're getting married, meeting their spouses there. Yeah. How, how is this different from that? Or, or are you That's saying that is the anomaly, Ruslan? This ain't how it is all around the country. Most of these churches is dry. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, it's introducing a new element that is actually a need that hasn't been met. Um, but I think the, the main answer to that question, honestly, is just, well, there's a few answers. But one is business structure. Okay. Um, I mean, I can say that I do this full time. It is a for-profit business. Okay. And there's nothing wrong with that as we are business people. So this is um, independent of any local that's church. That's what it is. Okay. It's independent of any church. There's no tie-ins where, yeah. Um, and I think because of that, mm -hmm. it actually, um, the the money, the the connections, all that actually circulates in a way where it's, um, what's the word? It, it's more, I guess it's like the main focus. Mm -hmm. It's really the main focus. So for me, Uh, with clubs or with this event, it's actually giving me an opportunity to to DJ, and and D clubs a lot of times are DJ centric. Clubs mm -hmm. don't do well if their DJs aren't actually doing their thing. Mm -hmm. I would say this is just what concerts are to uh, rap artists, mm -hmm. and a lot of people aren't questioning concerts because it's, well, it's more, there's, well, there's yeah, there's still, I, I forget, there's, there's, <laughs> there's still <laughs> there's still questioning concerts. But I, I think it, it it's very similar to that where okay. it's like if you if you're a DJ you should be DJing in clubs. Yeah. But unfortunately, as a Christian, well, not unfortunately because I love what we're doing now. This is an event for us to uh, exercise our skills. Got you. And also other people with business and hospitality and that. So what are the venues then? If they're not clubs and they're not churches, where y'all gathering? Well, we still use churches. You do. Um, okay. I initially wanted to just use um, neutral venues. Uh -huh. Um. I did my my first two events at a neutral venue, uh, but as I've got into this business and I've, it's a pop up club right now. I do aspire to get my own space, mm -hmm. but as of now, as we're trying to get spaces, convincing a regular venue that you want to do an event that's non alcoholic, again for profit, they're not making the money that they usually make for clubs. Right, because clubs most of their money is coming from alcohol yes. sales, which yeah. or, and and venues like House of Blues, yeah. Their, their money is coming from alcohol sales. They're not really making a ton of money on tickets. Exactly. Sales. Yeah. So it's like as much as I would love a regular venue because the sound, the stru it's structured to have something like this. Mm -hmm. The alcohol portion is just the main deal breaker right now. Okay. And what's the ages of these events? So my event, I know some of the events actually have 18 and up. Mine is all ages. Um, some people have said this in the comments and I agree where it's like we have nothing to hide and there's nothing wrong with... Um, bringing all ages together because I also think another issue we have in some churches, not all, but intergen intergenerational fellowship. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like being able to just hang out, have a good time with your little brother, your little sister is mm -hmm. so much more powerful than saying, Hey, I'm going to this Christian club. You stay at home. Mm -hmm. So I love when I, I've been, a, I was a youth minister for eight years and I loved showing my teens how to have a good time. So I believe there's a there's a great big brother big sister opportunity to bring out you know people to your events. So I do all ages. Okay, so if I'm not into loud music mm -hmm. and I am not a whippersnapper dancer, <laughs> like all the footage I see, folks doing backflips back and, and going coordinated crazy. dances yeah. and Backstreet Boys type uh -huh. stuff. What is the appeal for someone like me to pull up? Well. I don't want to make it seem like it's an all thing for everybody to pull it. Like, if it's not your thing, it's not your thing, and we're not going to condemn you for it, you know. But there is—what I'm working on, I always hope for with the venue is 
rooms for fellowship. Like my last event was at a live church and they have a lobby that was big enough for people to just hang out. And I was so busy working and DJing, but it was cool hearing stories of people saying, hey, I came to the event because I'm new to the city and I just was sitting in the lobby. I didn't even go inside because I was meeting a bunch of people. Some people prayed for me. Some people, you know, gave me some resources. So there is a portion and um, a, a part of the event that I love where I want to structure it to where people could fellowship, play games, and hang out. Mm. And I do keep intermissions within these uh, sets because I have another opening DJ uh, where people could just hang out and talk. So Okay, so there's not music playing the whole time. Nah, I that like was the, the part I never understood about clubs. Yeah. Why would I go to a noisy club <laughs> yeah. to, to meet people? Yeah. Because the music is so loud. I know, right? Right, and, and and you can't even hear yourself think. So you're talking over. <laughs> hey, How y'all doing? What's good? Well, I, I never understood the appeal of that yeah. in in a in a I guess a, a worldly sense or whatever we want to yeah. say. Yeah. So then you guys don't just have music blaring. No, nah, not the loud. whole time. But okay. I can I can answer to that because for me I'm the extrovert party person. Like mm -hmm. I was raised in party culture, being from the Bay Area. Like it was normal to go out to functions and connect with people. Mm -hmm. But it's just that like mindedness when you share memories with somebody, singing your favorite song with somebody from the top of your lungs. You know, it's just you're actually building friendships because you're creating memories together. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, talking to somebody, trying to have full conversation. Some people miss those social cues, mm -hmm. and it gets awkward. But I think for me, like being able to like, I call it joyful noise because it's like yelling these songs at the top of your lungs. Sometimes in a church setting is actually distracting. Mm -hmm. and, and I think this gives you the best of both worlds where mm -hmm. you're, you don't feel like you're out of place, like attention sinking. Because church usually, you'll get one or two hype or depending on the church, you know. But to have a place where you're allowed to just let loose in a way, um, I enjoy it personally. Because I, I dance in a, I dance funny. Like, I have fun. And I think in church, it would almost be like, I feel like it's just not reverent in a sense mm. in a church service to do that. But for a party, it's like, okay, no, nah, let me praise God with everything that I got, mm. you know? And I feel like it it gives that permission, that green light. Um, Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Can I add on to that? Too? Yeah. yeah. Go for it, babe. And I also just want to speak um, very briefly on the other creatives that mm -hmm. are in the space as well. A lot of times uh, we've identified like there's not too much space for creatives in the sense of like the the um, why is the word escaping me? Like the break dancers yes. and the people who know how to dance and they're super creative at it. But like he's saying, can I really do this in a church setting? Can I do this during a church service? <laughs> or do I have to like be a praise dancer with, you know, the blanket and all of that? Like, can I really <laughs> the use the gift God gave me mm -hmm. and still um, bring glory to him in it? And so I think that Joyful Noise definitely does create that space as well. Yeah, that's definitely true. Hmm. Okay. So giving space to people who maybe want to express themselves in a unorthodox way. Yes. Yeah. And not having to go into the world. Exactly. Yes. More or less. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, th I think that, that that's an interesting point. I think, yeah, I think that the tough part is, okay, so you do these once a month. Yeah. How many people show up usually? Uh, So it's grown to about 300 now. Okay, so every month there's 300. And then are there artists at these as well? So like yeah. live rapping sometimes So too? the way that I do my set um, is very unique, and that's what kind of made it like flow really well. Is within my set, I'm playing other artists' music, uh -huh. but if that artist is there, I just t I pass them the mic. Mm. And they'll get one or two songs, and I just go back to playing music. Mm -hmm. So you'll get surprise artists a lot of times. Like I'll play a Caleb Gordon song, and he just so happens to be there. Mm -hmm. And I give the artist a choice, like, you can either take the mic and go crazy, or mm -hmm. you could just dance and vibe with your crowd, because mm -hmm. some of them just want to see how the crowd reacts. And mm -hmm. It's like a regular, that's the other aspect of clubs that people actually don't understand. Like, mm -hmm. clubs are still an essential portion for seeing if a song is hot. If you break a song, you bring it to the DJs, and the club plays it based on their response, they'll know whether or not they should put more money into it or run it up, so... I think that's another portion that actually for the Christian space, we we have a disadvantage because we don't know what the public actually feels about this song. How is it provoking them like like physically when mm -hmm. they listen to it? Mm -hmm. It could be hot numbers wise or metrics and playlists, but mm -hmm. is this song really driving people to sing and dance? Mm -hmm. And I think that's um, a portion of it that actually is cool, too. Interesting. OK. 
that I, I can see that as a practical utility for artists to like test a record out mm -hmm. on, on an actual audience before they necessarily put it on Spotify to see if it goes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I think the pushback is going to be if these things are happening, what what is this fulfilling that a local church can't? Right. And where's that line between hey, these are aspects of my interests that can be redeemed into the kingdom of God mm -hmm. versus these are things that are good. Celebration is just generally good, mm -hmm. right? Versus, hey, what are things we got to completely reject, mm -hmm. right? Receive, redeem, reject, right? Because mm -hmm. we're not going to do a Christian strip club for Jesus. Yeah, nah. Right? We're not going to sell meth for Jesus. Nah. <laughs> right? There's certain hard lines that yeah. we, we can't do. Mm -hmm. So why would a Christian need to, to, to still participate in what most folks who maybe before I was a Christian, I didn't get clubs, mm -hmm. right? Like, I, like we used to have, I'll tell you my critique on all ages clubs in a moment, but we yeah. used to have an all ages club out here. Yeah. And I'm I didn't talking get it about then. it. I'm really talking yeah. about it. I, like, I didn't understand. I was like, what, what are we doing? Like, yeah. what is this? this is, this is, this is weird. Yeah. You know? So why would someone who's a Christian then need this versus just like, Hey, a local youth gathering, a local mm -hmm. revival or a local fill in a blank. I get that. I get your point that like yeah. a revival is going to have a very specific agenda, worship, preaching, mm -hmm. altar call. Right. Yeah. So why would someone need this? That's a great question. I think biblically it's that aspect of like we all need each other. And I think this is a unique dynamic uh, aspect uh, or event for a certain demographic. Mm -hmm. And it's not that it's replacing anything. We're mm -hmm. not trying to replace church and we're not trying to say, oh, yeah, church ain't doing it. Mm -hmm. It's just I've been around enough creatives to know that um, they need a place and an outlet to just do all the things that we talked about. So I see it, honestly, as an extension, as an arm mm. to bring about fellowship in the city. It's a bridge to bring your friend who has been hurt by church mm. and just needs to see people like them that love God and praise God. Like, I love the fact that these events are, are very true to the culture. When I DJed in Atlanta, you see people with beanies and gold fronts, but they <laughs> they praising God. And it's like, oh, snap, like, that dude loves God, I do. And then they, they get to build that connection. So it's on Saturday or Friday. So it's like, okay, you built that bridge. And now it's like, come to church tomorrow. And I make sure my events, some some do events late. Mine ends at 11 because I'm like, shoot, I, I need that rest. I'm getting mm. older. But it is a bridge. It's an arm. Mm. It's it's not something that we're trying to replace or, or remove anything. Mm -hmm. It's like I've been around enough people to hear these gripes and groans about we don't have something to do outside of our game night. Uh, and it's a lot to put on. a. Ch I think one thing that we do in our culture is put a lot on, on the church mm. to solve every single problem. We mm -hmm. put a lot on the pastor mm. to say, hey, why don't you do this event? They're like, we're still trying to prepare for the conference that we're doing. We're still preparing for our Sunday lesson. Like mm -hmm. to do this for us, we're doing it full time. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot. So mm -hmm. I'm like to put that on churches who may not have taken time to study it because mm -hmm. it is an art. Mm -hmm. It's an art to the hospitality. So to do that, would be a lot. So I think it helps. It, mm. it really does supplement and support more than anything. Interesting. Have you had any churches get more uh, connected and want to like make it something regular at their venues? Yes. You was going to say something? Well, I was also going to say you should add on to that uh, the point that you felt about young adults. Mm -hmm. So like young adults having work where they connect with people or mm -hmm. like hookah bars or like the actual club and like those are your options, but as Christians, it's like okay, where do we go when we want to be around our peers, mm -hmm. um, but also be in a, in a a clean, pure space where we can glorify God? Yeah, yeah. Everybody has birthdays and occasions, and it's like, does it always have to be at my church? Mm -hmm. And and not that <laughs> it's kind of a joke, but it's like a lot of churches treat like other church events like rival gangs. Sometimes it's like if I'm going to this church event and I'm not going to my church event, they feel bad. So my event being neutral is kind of like, OK, both churches are coming together. Mm. And to, to add that to your question, what's cool is there has been churches that, that have utilized my event as an outing. Mm. Uh, last last event, shout out TKC. They reached out to me, said, hey, we're going to have. 40 50 of us come and just celebrate mm -hmm. because again it just it relieved the pastor of something to do for mm -hmm. the weekend it's like we just gonna put our bring everybody together carpool there and then have a good time they even had a meetup before where they did their lesson and prayed for mm -hmm. each other and all that and then they came to our event to dance and celebrate mm -hmm. so it's really just meeting that need and taking the load off of mm -hmm. a lot of the churches interesting yeah i mean it sounds like it's for 
a specific type of person that is probably looking for some sort of social gathering and outlet that may not be available to them in, in their local church. Or maybe they go to a small church. Yes. Maybe they go to uh, a storefront church and there's yep. 20 members. You yeah. know? And so they're, they're trying to connect. They're trying to meet people. Help me understand like the all ages aspect because... Like I said, we used to have a place out here. It was renamed so many times, like Ice House, yeah, Ice Fusion, House or... <laughs> Distillery. It was all these names. Uh -huh. And it was a dry, yeah. all-ages club. They played non-Christian. It wasn't Christian. They played non-Christian music. Yeah. Uh, but then you would run into, like, 19, 20-year-old Marines from Camp Pendleton <laughs> yeah. pulling up and dancing mm -hmm. with 14, 15, 16-year-olds. Yeah. And then you just, you're creating a recipe of just right. dysfunction and uh, predatory vibes. Yeah. Right, right. You know? No, that's real. Uh how how what 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 measures are you guys taking that like if my you know thirteen year old fourteen year old family member wants to come with a twenty two year old and his mm -hmm. other twenty two year old and she might just be a little developed for her age yeah. right what precautions are you taking to be like yeah this ain't really you know like this, <laughs> yeah that's not no, really that's a vibe. great question I mean the 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 reality of a lot of things is is we have to understand what we have control of and what we don't have control of. And I, I kind of have to look at it and frame it in my mind. Like, if I invite people over to my crib, um, how am I just going to accommodate and make sure they know, like, what's the parameters? How, how can I create a culture that people know what my intentions are and then adapt or, or adopt that? Mm -hmm. So for me, connections, friendships, all that, we should be meeting people from all different backgrounds and stuff like that. The hearts and the motives of men and women, I can't. It could be all it could be all the same age and still be some reckless behavior. Mm -hmm. Now the things that we can have control of, one, we have security. We have solid security, armed security. So, you know, there's just there's that aspect where we're making sure like on base level, there's nobody coming in and you'll be surprised. Obviously, we got our very like, you know, what's it called? Vigilant vi Vigilant, vigilant, vigilant Christians mm -hmm. who, yeah, we had to tell them like, put the strap back in the car. Like we, yeah, we, you guys are in Florida. <laughs> we're in Florida. Same thing. And, like we <laughs> trying to protect. We, I'm like, all right, thank you, but we we got it. We got our swords too. So yeah. we do have we do have security on that level. The other aspect is, um, you know, honestly, I pray I pray over my my guest list. Like I see every ticket that comes in. I'm praying for the people. I'm making sure that that's an aspect, knowing that God's gonna cover those parts. And for me, my years of DJing and knowing the power of music is going to allow me to really, like, dictate the energy of the crowd. Mm. Like, like, that's why I do keep a good aspect of contemporary gospel with Christian rap, with all this other stuff. So the vibes, even if you're, like, heavy on Christian hip-hop, it can go a certain way because it, it just heavy bass with a lot of energy and mosh pits, it's mm. not as safe either. Mm. But again, on the social aspect... My, my hope is that people conduct conversations that are healthy where they could learn more about each other. And if people are coming there just to find a shorty, like I'm just praying that they understand that life is more than that. Like mm -hmm. we, I make sure in the beginning of the event and in the, the beginning, the intermission and the end, I'm explaining biblically why I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. It's to be hospitable to the locals and the guests and the strangers. And I encourage and I want everybody to do the same thing. Like, if you're meeting somebody that's younger than the age that you're looking for, you should see her as a little sister. You should be able to say, okay, God bless you. Glad you're here. If you see somebody that's older, that has nothing to do with your relationship goals, you should still be willing to interact and socialize. So mm. I, I'm just praying and, and just hoping because, honestly, there's still a lot to learn. Yeah. And are you, are you saying this in the middle of the night? You're having intermissions where you're like, yeah. you know. Yeah, I'm literally reading to them because... Do you have, like, prompts you're, you're telling them? Yeah, I'm really, like... It's not like a, okay, now everybody socialize, yeah. but it's just, like, reading them biblically, like, this is what hospitality looks like, baby. Okay. Conduct yourselves accordingly, because okay. I, I really can't control most of it. But I do have another aspect is volunteers that okay. are my eyes and ears. Okay. Yeah. So that's another part I can say. And yeah. they need parental supervision as well. So oh, yeah. they're not just in Sorry, here by themselves. Okay. If they are, I believe, under 16, yeah, 16 they have to have... Yeah, 16 under, you do have to have a legal guardian. An adult guardian. with yeah. them. Oh, that's smart. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I'm I, just trying to help you protect you. No, nah, yeah. thank you. He's, <laughs> He's like, like, all right. Uh, uh, 13 year olds. I know. Ages. I'm, like, glad, uh, I'm, glad, I'm glad you said that because I'm still figuring it out. But So I think the beauty of it is when you see families uh -huh. come together. Uh -huh. Like one of the last events we had, we had a married couple who were a little bit older 
and they brought their two teenage girls. And so I think it's so beautiful to see and and to be able to create that environment where parents can party and enjoy themselves and, you know, be that cute couple. But at the same time, their kids even are able to see like my parents are in love. They can dance. You know, we can all sing praises to God together. And as 14, 15 year olds, um, you said this on one one podcast you had, like the teaching of abstinence versus indulgence, right? Like if we keep them away from an experience like this, Mm -hmm. it's only going to um, intensify their curiosity, Mm -hmm. especially if it's like, okay, you know, my older friends are doing it. My parents are doing it. Why do I have to stay at home? Mm -hmm. And what I noticed and what many people do notice when you get into college culture or even high school, you're so curious at that point that you're willing to do it by any means necessary. So I think it's beautiful that we get to invite the youth here That's good. and to see like, this is what partying looks like with God. It's not lame. It's not cringe. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be drunk to do it. There's actually other dances than twerking. Like <laughs> yep. we have, um, where is uh, Rashida? Rashida from? She's Rashida. From she's a she's Africa. a Af- she's a professional Afrobeat dancer. Fire. I wouldn't know that, but you wouldn't. You now know because she comes to the events to dance, and I'm like, man, she's like, dope. She's teaching the crowd how to do the moves. Mm-hmm. And- we have another friend named Angel who's a professional dancer, and so just watching people um, cultivate the space and kind of teach us because I didn't know how to dance coming into it either, mm-hmm. but teach us how to dance in a way that is not um, just off or something yeah like yeah. but i think to to answer to bring it together it, it's just a communal effort like i have roles in different places to keep all those things in place uh from the dancers helping the dancers just go uh the artists keeping people entertained the volunteers in the lobbies handing out waters like asking people if they need anything mm-hmm. like just making sure we're all on the same page so mm. if anything does look left we can we can handle it but i think the 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 value or the power of majority um, I don't know the word, but like mass appeal, I guess. When you see everybody else conducting themselves in a way that's righteous, mm-hmm. it actually calls those who are maybe off to like get right. Mm. Versus the opposite end, when we go to clubs and we try to emer- well, mm-hmm. <laughs> secular clubs, or we go to places that are majority mm-hmm. uh, secular and reckless, mm-hmm. you feel more tempted to conform mm. to what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Right. So that conf- that conformity that people talk about or mm-hmm. try to you know push against us, we're actually giving ourselves a conduce group yeah. to actually connect and do that. Has, it, has the opposite ever happened where somebody maybe brings their non-Christian, new Christian, backslid Christian into the environment and they're like, all right, <laughs> y'all doing too much now. We got Y'all got to temp- temper this down. Like now, now someone is twerking, someone is wilding, someone uh-huh. is, you know what I mean? Has mm-hmm. that happened and, ha- and have you had to deal, and how have you dealt with that? And, and Or how would you deal with that if it hasn't happened yet? Yeah, um, it's like a concept of, again, the mass appeal. I think I've seen some people <laughs> when I'm DJing, uh-huh. you can see them kind of like processing mm-hmm. or like checking themselves. But then they, you can see them kind of look around and be like, yo, like, okay, let me get right. So mm-hmm. I think um, a good example, just to be transparent, I think there was a there was a girl, specific girl, um, that was dancing. And I, she wasn't intentionally trying to twerk and mm-hmm. be uh, sensual. But like I think I love this story, by the way. Yeah, it's like I feel like the direction of the music though, like I said, when we was just trap heavy. You just hit it with some Kirk or some Kirk or some Fred. <laughs> yeah, that, no, some literally. Mav. So at that time my boy Cam was DJing. Um, the, the drums go out and no, it's just keys. It's a balance. Cause Cam was playing trap trap. He played some New York joints, then he played some southern joints. And mm-hmm. I was like, yo, Cam, you gotta you got you to go this direction, you know, flip to some gospel. So he did literally put on Brighter Day, yeah. mm, and it kind of relieved mm. the tension. Uh-huh. Mm. But that's the art of DJing, and I feel like that's another part of this club thing that people sleep on. Mm-hmm. Having a DJ that understands, mm. like, the power of music mm-hmm. is very important because I see my role as, like, a worship leader. Like, mm-hmm. the pace and the the, mm-hmm. the style of music, you really have to balance it because mm-hmm. um, it could go either way. So there's been one situation where that, that kind of has started to happen, and and how you've handled it is just by driving the music and the tempo into a different direction. Yeah, yeah, and okay. it's always been that because when I was in the world uh, before being a Christian, I can I can tell when a party was gonna get shot up mm. just based on how many songs was being played mm. and what songs was being played. So I just understand the value and the power of music enough to know like I can I can kind of move and like kind of facilitate the crowd in yeah. a healthy way. Yeah. Now with that being said, like. 
I think, you know, to everybody out there, because I get a lot of DMs about, oh, I want to do my own event. I want to throw these Christian clubs. It's just like anything. Like, everything is a responsibility. Like, we can't just jump onto it because it's trending or it's cool. Or A lot of people are, like, excited about this because they're seeing the views and the responses. And I think they really do still have to evaluate, like, are they really called to do this? Because it is a responsibility that is heavy. And I feel like for me, it's been 10 years of being a Christian and hosting events and, and being around people who have cried out for stuff like this. Mm. Like my teens, my young men, young adult ministries that have been trying to figure this out. And I've just finally been, you know, called and like compelled to like go after it. Mm. So, mm. Yeah, I, I do think that especially in Protestant circles, we do have a very uh, black or white, relationship with with not just celebration but i would say pleasure in general like yeah. anything that's fun it's like no god don't want you to have any fun <laughs> right. and because god doesn't want you to have any fun i'm gonna pause my relationship with god and go wild out mm -hmm. and have all the fun i can <laughs> yeah. and then people kind of yo-yo mm -hmm. when i went to, to israel and i was around not ultra orthodox but like I, I, moderate orthodox i don't know what you would call them but there was a, a balance of they would really celebrate. They would dance. They, they would do turn. their yeah. They would do their thing, but yeah. it wasn't in a way where it was it was sinful. And I would say other parts of the the country outside of the West that I've experienced that that there is a an ability to celebrate, an ability to enjoy mm -hmm. dance, um, food, community, even alcohol in a responsible way, yeah. right? Where you're not drinking to get pitch black drunk, yeah. Right? You're you're having a drink at Shabbat dinner and yep. and that's it. You have a glass of wine, maybe two, and you're not turning up, right? Which is which is controversial for most Protestants where mm -hmm. they're talking about, you know, Jesus turned water into grape juice. Yeah. You know? And it's like, no, no, no. We <laughs> no. don't know how to engage with substances yeah. that uh can become idols and can become dangerous mm -hmm. and know how to moderate those things because we've never really been taught. Yeah. You know, no, so. I agree. And I think that's the huge part, you know, for me is knowing my limits. I'm not uh, an expert with drinking and alcohol and beverage. Maybe there's somebody that was a former bartender that might figure that a area out. But I think celebration. Yeah, what I'm not saying is we need like bars <laughs> yeah, for yeah. Jesus. That's not what I'm saying. No, nah, I, I get you. But <laughs> someone's going to take that. Yeah, that they, out of they're going to clip everything. I'm, I'm preparing myself for it now. But like, I believe celebration is definitely the key point for me where it's like, I just think we need to learn how to conduct ourselves mm -hmm. in these areas because one they're either you're either going to just be around it in the secular space like from weddings birthday parties like again these occasions will always happen mm -hmm. but do we know what to do when they happen like yep. me DJing weddings that was a interesting uh adventure a lot of christian DJs know cuz that was like our most christian DJs your bread and butter is weddings cuz that's where you kind of get to keep it clean cuz it's family but still, I would DJ pastors' weddings, um, you know, Christian artists' weddings. And because they're insecure, they don't actually know how to, like, throw parties. Mm. They think accommodating their their guest is playing secular music. Mm. And, you know, just they didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. They wasn't equipped. So then if most of your family, they're used to going to clubs and, and turning up, mm -hmm. they're just going to take control of that. Mm. Like, oh, we need that. We need the alcohol. We're going to really turn up. With their mm -hmm. idea of turning up, they just... So I'm like, man, I want to equip people to show how to like have holy yeah. celebrations. Yeah, I think that the interesting thing for me and my wife has always we would, we never did like the club thing together, but mm -hmm. we went through I mean probably like a decade of like multiple weddings a year. Yeah, and so we've always when we when we were in our 20s or early 30s, like we've always I guess kind of had that outlet to yeah. go and just go to weddings and dance. Like when yeah, this is the three four times a year we dance is at a wedding. Mm -hmm. So there was no need to like seek out an environment where we can dance or do yeah. we've never I mean I guess I know some Christian couples that have like we're going to the club to go yeah. dancing me and my wife <laughs> which is like weird. But to me uh -huh. we, but I've just never had that as that cuz we've always had an outlet for yeah. that. Yeah. But you how, know if how it, was those experiences though with when it came to weddings and do you feel like there would be times where you you feel like well I don't know where your your heart is with like music selection and stuff but like do you feel like sometimes the the Christian weddings would go left sometimes when no, it comes to the environment? No, 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 no. I would say because folks had sense. <laughs> yeah, amen. <laughs> the Even playing secular music, clean secular music, and by secular music, I'm not saying yeah. Future's latest song about being drugged out or <laughs> yeah, Ice yeah. Spice or, you know, the, the nah, I get you. Sexy Red or whatever <laughs> yeah. nonsense. That's, I'm talking like they would play... Uh, 
clap your hands. Everybody yeah, yeah, clap yeah, your hands, yeah. right? Cha-cha <laughs> slide. Like uh-huh. they were playing stuff from the '90s, mm-hmm. clean versions from the '90s, and th- those would be the songs that get everybody on a dance. You play cha-cha yeah. slide, everybody's gonna get on dance, right? You play yeah. Cupid shuffle, everyone's gonna get on dance floor. So it was like records like that yeah. at a wedding. There's all there's already not a ton of profanity or like this yeah. is how we do it. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like you mm-hmm. play certain records and. Those would be the records to get people on a dance floor, yeah. and then you, you just dance, right? But you'd be surprised, and I, that's good, and it, it helps my point of a lot of those songs that are played at weddings mm-hmm. started off in clubs and mm-hmm. parties that became it became the staple at the weddings because mm-hmm. it was played at these places, mm-hmm. and because we don't have hits or anything to like supplement or replace those joints. Mm-hmm. Now this new age of kids, this new generation of kids don't really have something to play at weddings. And a lot of times the weddings I was DJing where they're like, we're trying to play new modern stuff. Mm-hmm. They they really didn't have anything that was yeah. popular on both ends because a yeah. lot of times you're accommodating. What do you think of, of uh, Paul Russell? Because I feel like he does that. Like mm-hmm. the past two records he's done, past three records he's done where he had... Uh, the boot thing and everything. Boot thing, Say Cheese. And then he had one before that that was like... Um, Something holy, something, something holy, mm-hmm. right? He did it uh, with Cato. Mm-hmm. Uh, those are all records that can kind of live in both worlds. They're all upbeat dance records, mm-hmm. but they're all clean. Mm-hmm. But they're not Christian records, right? Yeah. They're not. There's no say cheese as one reference to God in it. So what do you what do you think about uh like is it possible that this feel good upbeat music that I had in the '90s, right? And granted, we also had Tupac and NWA yeah, yeah. and a bunch of other, <laughs> other stuff, Snoop. Uh-huh. Um, but do you feel like though that there, that there can be a resurgence of those records? And then as a DJ, like, are you playing Paul Russell because he's not a Christian artist, mm-hmm. but he's also not a secular, you know, he's not, he's yeah, not a, great got, a worldly secular artist either. Yeah, that's a great question. I, I think in regards to having those songs, it's good. I feel like it's a good mediator. I think to move people in a direction where if you want to have people praising God, but having a good time, I feel like it's good to have lyrical content that does worship God, like mm-hmm. in a very intentional sense. Mm. Um, so you're not even playing the secular Christian stuff. I'm not. I'm. I'm not even. Wow. Well. Well. Sorry. I take that back. I. It depends. Okay. It depends. But I. Me as a DJ, um, I enjoy songs that have people. You know, I'm usually picking songs that have people praising God, like uh-huh. intentionally, because again, words have power. Sure. So yeah, my boot thing is good to. You know, it's good to recognize like a beautiful woman mm-hmm. and and just th- trying to holler at her. But again, mm-hmm. talks about uh, we talked about balance. Mm-hmm. So if I play three booth things, you know, at my party, mm-hmm. that again is gonna have people in their head like, you know what? I'm looking to my left. Look I'm, gonna, I'm gonna check out my <laughs> shorty. Mm-hmm. And I'm but not, don't you feel that also serves as you potentially can serve as a utility that now there are these crossover records mm. that are clean that are on radio. Yeah. Made by Christians mm-hmm. that could kind of have that bridge between, like, worship, Christian rap, and, like, secular music. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's the thing. It's like, I'm not against it. I think there always has to have balance. So if you're playing a booth thing, you have to supplement it. Like, if I'm DJing, I'm writing out my set to make sure, like, they're going to talk about one aspect of God. I'm like, what song can do that? Mm-hmm. I'm talking about, I'm using Victory. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm remixing that with yeah. a certain beat. Yeah. Like the mashup right now, because mashups are popular, mm-hmm. that's helped a lot because I'm able to bring a, bre- a beat that creates certain movements and dance. Mm-hmm. But lyrically, it's like straight up, just some some songs is biblical. Like mm-hmm. people are speaking the word of God. And yeah. that's, that's always my goal, mm-hmm. personally. Interesting. Yeah, I feel like there's that in-between mm-hmm. of... Secular music by Christians, which people are gonna freak out about, but I don't think there's it's anything wrong by make Christians who make secular music. I think I think that has a utility in terms of like who would I rather have kids listen to on TikTok? Mm. I would much rather have them listen to Connor Price, Nick D, Nick D and D, yeah. Paul Russell, mm. right, than Ike Spice exactly. and whoever's going viral on TikTok, right? Yeah. So I think there's a there's a there's a practical utility there. I also think there's a utility of um like crossover songs, mainstream songs that were written by someone that was a Christian. So like a lot of that first Donda album, I think is like clean. Mm -hmm. And there are some pretty overt like worship songs on there, Mm -hmm. even though Kanye has gone off the rails, unfortunately, right? So I think think of it from from that perspective as well of like, okay, there are these like bridges that can be built potentially. Yeah. Again, it supplements and supports, but I think the main thing, I think the biggest thing for me is getting people to proclaim the praises of God. Like, mm-hmm. like 
building that habit, that repetition, like I, I feel like at these events where you have a group setting, communal like celebration, I feel like the I want to say the safest, but like the most effective mm -hmm. uh, way to keep the environment like like God centered, biblical, like it's just to play overtly Christian music. Yeah, and overtly Christian, but tastefully. Mm -hmm. Like I'm like if you see one of my sets, like it's it's fire. Mm -hmm. Like because it's like people are seeing the energy up, but mm -hmm. they're singing rest of like in the sanctuary, mm -hmm. or they're singing one of um, you know Caleb's songs where it's like speaking about concepts that mm -hmm. are biblical where mm -hmm. they're like okay cool so again i'm not against what they're doing uh where they do secular as christian mm -hmm. because again we it, it goes back to like we need it we need everybody everybody needs to be solid in their mm -hmm. faith first and this whatever they do artistically like they need to do their thing and do it well mm -hmm. we have to be excellent in what we do so i'm i'm happy that we're, these breakthroughs are happening mm -hmm. because again we're we're representing all aspects of the body yeah yeah, I, I guess I'm thinking like from the outside in, I think Caleb is an anomaly, but I feel like there's a decrease in like Christian hip hop that's booming. It's it's because again, we don't have enough platforms highlighting it. Like oh, you, you think it's a lack of platforms? Yes. Okay. Definitely. There's not enough people I got I have an alternate theory, but yeah, that's go ahead cool. and flesh that out. <laughs> no, no, I can guarantee you I have a t I have a ton of artists who are very talented, very gifted. Mm -hmm. And if they had a good infrastructure or at least some good mentorship, they could do way better. Hmm. Um, they would make one really good song and then maybe one or two good songs. But because of the lack of push from vlogs, from we like we can name in our hands like how many vlogs are out there that are actually pushing Christian music, mm -hmm. platforms that are pushing Christian music. And we have these kids that are making these hits in their rooms right now, but there's nobody knowing about it. There's nobody that knows about it because these kids, like you said, aren't, in the place where Caleb is at, where he's pushing it every single day. But um, in the secular space, you don't, like, a lot of these kids that are making these hits don't do as much, uh, they don't make as much effort mm -hmm. <laughs> to get out because they have these platforms that could take a viral song and put this artist on a platform. Hmm. So I, I, I truly believe there's tons of artists out there. We just don't know about it. Hmm. And I, I believe with what I do in my events, yes, I'm going to pass to you. My events is actually helping a lot because I'm playing, like I said, one or two songs from an artist. And they'll say, who's this? Mm -hmm. Literally in, from Orlando, in Orlando, and this kid's performing. And everybody's now tapping in with them. Now mm -hmm. all the artists are meeting with them. Like my dog Walker Man and Be Fresh. They was from my South Florida has a huge scene right now mm -hmm. that nobody knows about because a lot of these artists are just kind of like wet behind the ears with marketing and stuff. But go ahead, babe. Yeah. And to add on to that, another one of his foundational reasons for starting this event was to be able to provide that platform for up and coming artists who maybe aren't necessarily at the Caleb Gordon, the Alex Jean level, but they still have great talent as well as great potential. And something that he does once a week is called Tastemaker Tuesdays. And so he pretty much has a community of people who entrusts him to critique their music and as these these people, these artists, they are cultivating um, their artistry week by week. He's seeing the potential in them. He's seeing the growth and everything that they're applying based on what he's saying. And um, he's been able to provide Joyful Noise as a platform to get the mic to them and to help people to see like mm -hmm. these people are talented. You might not know their name, but once you understand what they're doing and hear their music, you're going to be sold. Mm. So yeah. that was another element of Joyful Noise. Yeah. Yeah. That's dope. I think I want to hear more about the tie in to, you said, small businesses and mm -hmm. entrepreneurship. But uh, here's my theory, and you guys could you guys could totally shred this and rip this apart. <laughs> Coming for it. To. Guns are loaded. No. <laughs> so here's what I think. I think the barrier to entry within Christian hip hop is so low mm. and it's so easy to get started that a kid can get started and actually hit a ceiling of I'm on Rapzilla, I'm on these five Christian rap playlists on Spotify that are Spotify editorials. Mm -hmm. And then the ceiling to, I got booked to go do this youth group show. I got paid a couple grand to go do this conference. I got paid this, mm -hmm. I got paid that. The, the ceiling keeps people comfortable. Of course. And so what happens is then people have zero ambition, godly ambition, mm -hmm. to go beyond that. So I, I look at it like this. I look at it like um, 
If I want to know people who are having healthy marriages and staying married for decades and decades, mm -hmm. I, I have to go look at those outliers. If I want to know people who are shredded and have abs and are staying in great shape, I got to go st into their 40s and 50s. I got to go study those outliers. Within music, there are people right now who are making amazing multi six figure livings, independent, mm -hmm. off of their phone and in the living room. Yeah. And no one's willing to do what Caleb's willing to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm speaking on a very, I don't care who feels a way about it. Yeah. Most of Christian rappers are not willing to do what Caleb's willing to do, what Kyron mm -hmm. the Light's willing to do, mm -hmm. to consistently mm -hmm. hack away at short form videos, mm -hmm. make good music, release a lot of it, make good content, make content around it, make yeah. a lot of it, and keep making it. No, yeah. Most people aren't. That's so they're weird. like, yo, I got on this playlist. Yeah. I made two bands last month playing as you. <laughs> I'm crew. good. I'm yeah. chilling. And, yeah. and, in the secular, mm -hmm. to get to two grand a month is way harder to get to two grand a month in the, in, in the Christian. It's way harder to make mm -hmm. a, to, to make that kind of money. So I don't think it's a lack of platforms. I think it's a lack of godly ambition mm -hmm. because they get comfortable to hit that ceiling and they really don't want to do the work. I mean, I'm talking like, how, okay, how many Christian rappers consistently make short form vertical content? We can name them on our hand. Mm -hmm. Caleb? Hovey, Alex, Alex, Kyron the Light, Venice. Okay, who else? You know who that is. I don't know what it is. It's okay because it's there's artists that do it. Again, they just ain't cracking the code like like okay. a lot of people. Um, so so we've named five. Yeah, I got other people. Walker okay. Man. Uh, there is Isaac Mansfield. Is it converting? No. Okay. Now that's the thing. Um. So 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 why do you why do you think a Caleb converts? Why do you think a Hovey converts? Meaning by convert, I mean they're making interesting viral videos that are getting people over to their Spotify. The biggest thing I feel like for them is they educate themselves. They definitely apply what okay. they, they learn. Um, and I agree. I feel like work ethic is still the main factor. Work works. And a lot mm -hmm. of these artists think and they perceive that, okay, after a few placements, like mm -hmm. I've made it and I'm mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. Um the the side that I feel like there's still a buffer in the secular space. Like I've met people in the underground that do it full time mm -hmm. and stuff because again the platforms. Mm -hmm. And I feel like work across the board mm -hmm. in the Christian space, not just Christian hip hop. I'm talking about platforms. Like you're you're like the anomaly when it comes to even the podcasting. Mm -hmm. I, I believe there's still a lot of work to be done with podcasts. Mm -hmm. There's still a lot of work to be done with vlogs. There's mm -hmm. still a lot, of, a lot of work to be done, especially with events. If people put the effort with hosting events, mm -hmm. if if we could actually have a good concert mm -hmm. for once, <laughs> it would actually help the artist mm -hmm. just as much as anything else. A good yeah. playlist. I, I, I hear you. I just think the artists aren't driving the attention to the concerts that creates the opportunity to create a good event. Like, like it can't be your job I've to throw so a festival with 5,000 people if there's not artists in Christian hip-hop that can draw 5,000 people outside of Lecrae and maybe an Andy. Yeah, yeah. Like, that, that can't be on you to be like, hey, man, I know you're doing Joyful Noise, y'all getting 300 people, but, like, what we really need is our own festivals. Or if you look at <laughs> Like, the, no one's selling the yeah, tickets. Yeah, if you, if you look at the stories of the Rolling Louds, you yeah. know, starting in a small, well, they're small, but they're big parties. Right. Obviously, we are catching up. In a lot of ways, mm -hmm. um, that's one thing I'm re reminded. Like, I'm no pioneer. Like, I'm pioneering in some some sense, but like, I'm really just catching up to yeah. regular events. I'm really just trying to set the standard. Uh, but it's it's a I, biblically, it's a, it's a body. Like, mm -hmm. artists can't grow without the help of these other people. Mm -hmm. They're also not. I can't say there's not a lot of people reaching out to help these guys. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these artists that are coming up in the secular space, which I remember, they're they're getting a, a, a arm from one of their bigger homies. Mm. You know, when you look at the Young Thugs, the Futures, Lil Baby and all them are raised up through these artists' mentorship. The, 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 the cosign means. Yeah, the yeah, cosigns. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think, unfortunately, within the Christian space, a lot of the OGs, I ain't going to say they... they they just fell off and disappeared, but there's not there's not as much of a community communal effort when it comes to helping these artists take I off. I, th I think that's fair. I th and they all started their own labels and want to monetize the that, artists. That, to help. That, <laughs> everybody gets signed, and then that becomes a whole other business that people are jumping into that don't understand. Mm -hmm. And now now they're under this label, and while the artist is trying to figure out how to run a label, the younger artist is waiting for the next go. And it's there's so it's a very I, I think right now the system. Or our infrastructure is just just not working right now, yeah. and 
this next generation is coming in. Like that's what I witnessed with Caleb. Mm-hmm. He figured it out. Mm-hmm. But again, we know his character. Like he's he, he's confident. Yeah. He's gonna figure out whether nobody believes in it or not. Well, and and, and he's a workhorse. He's and a workhorse. He's really intelligent. <laughs> and, and, and that's good. And he and he's resilient. And he's gonna. And, and I'm, but I'm saying, but I'm, but here's here's the punchline. Those are the attributes of any successful entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. So we can't be like, oh well. Caleb's the anomaly. No, Caleb is a real creative entrepreneur. The thing is, when you look at, I mean, biblical principles is like seeds, like people that bear fruit, Mm -hmm. that fruit has seeds in it Mm -hmm. and it's going to bear more fruit. What came out of Caleb, Alex Jean uh, was also like a follow up because Mm -hmm. I was there. And actually what came out of Caleb was me, too, Mm -hmm. to an extent, because I was DJing, Mm -hmm. but I wasn't overtly Christian when I DJ. Mm -hmm. And he said, if you if you stamp this joint and just stand behind it and actually push Christian artists, mm-hmm. you're literally going to be the only DJ doing that. So mm-hmm. therefore, everybody's going to be looking to you for mm-hmm. the next step. And mm-hmm. then he, I can say that's a prophecy in a sense, because mm-hmm. two years later, mm-hmm. I'm doing that. Like, I am kind of the go-to person for up-and-coming artists, for mentorship, yeah. for encouragement, because I've created a platform for that. Yeah, yeah no, that's beautiful. I, I, and again, I, I think that that's the practical side of what you're doing is helpful mm-hmm. for that. I always sit back and look at Christian hip-hop, and I go... There's one side of it where it's like the um, it's like it's like the Eminem syndrome, like the, like Eminem being the first white rapper to break through, yeah. had to be nice, like yeah. he had to be good, uh-huh. and I feel like Christian hip hop, like because it's Jesus, we have to be, it has to be good, yeah. right? So I think a lot of Christian hip hop, in my opinion, is better than secular hip hop, mm-hmm. uh, just just from a sheer. Like I, I'm representing God, so I got to represent God properly. But I'm also gonna get looked at sideways because people are gonna say this Christian rap, and they mm-hmm. don't know a Lecrae or they don't know anybody. Yeah. Else. So I feel like there's also the quality of it. But I, I just my frustration has always been, we would do uh, Fan Love Fridays where I would yeah, do I remember. music, and bro, it got to a point where like everything was fire, like everything was good. Yeah, I, we finally Ray Rock would come in, we'd give him the tips, and these kids would get better, and they'd be like, all right, cool, y'all are dope now. Mm-hmm. Whether it's the technology makes it easier to make music now or whatever, fill in a blank. More YouTube tutorials on how to get your, what, whatever it is. Yeah. You guys are good now. Now let's pivot and let's study what Nick D is doing. Let's study what Paul is doing. Let's mm-hmm. study what they're doing. And y'all got to go do that mm-hmm. and build your audiences. And no one wanted to do that. Yeah. And that's literally why I stopped doing music reviews. Nah. Because I'm like, I can't sit here and listen to a bunch of fire music trust me, that you're exhausting. too lazy yeah. to put out there because <laughs> you don't want to figure out how to hack vertical videos yeah you know I, th- I think the thing that makes it hard to like be fully convinced by that is because i've seen very lackluster artists in the secular space take off because of the mm. systems in place like but, but like i don't know i don't know if i agree with that man if you look at a no, i mean independently real. like independently artists take off because so you know I, like i don't think a drake cosign means what it meant well five yeah years i ago. think i think the the concept of independence is a whole nother thing because independent artists we you know we're just now revealing that a lot of right. artists aren't independent. Right. You know they they put the guise of independence sure. and then they have some you know booking agent mm-hmm. or somebody that's that's agency filtered. behind them. Sure. Yeah. You know manager. there's marketing. Yes. There's like 300 ENT that I forget their name, but but they Empire Records be a, behind a lot. Yeah. Of stuff. There's yeah, there's yeah. so much within you know we learn behind the scenes that actually pushes the independent artists. Mm-hmm. That's why I enjoy seeing LaRussell, not just because he's from my city, but. Mm-hmm. He's really showing every day, like he, mm-hmm. him being independent and how he shows it shows how much hard work it is. You mm-hmm. are a CEO mm-hmm. to an enterprise, even seeing you with your team. Mm-hmm. A lot of people aren't able to see that just mm-hmm. through social media. So everybody's saying they want to, everybody's being misled in a lot of ways mm-hmm. where they say, I want to be independent. Um, so I think it, yeah, yeah, I agree. Like there's still a work ethic education factor behind it. Mm-hmm. I still want to call higher the other key players to the music industry that Mm. actually help independent artists Mm. for the Christian side. Mm. I'm grateful that proper XL is popping out Mm -hmm. soul CHH that are doing commentaries. There's people that are actually doing these other parts that are getting out the word and and me included, like doing these Christian clubs, Mm -hmm. being able to present these songs, giving them content in real time Mm -hmm. that they can use and say, man, I performed that joyful noise Mm. and those content, those Mm -hmm. videos are blowing up Mm -hmm. and it's moving their song forward because they're seeing crowds engaged. So, yeah, I hear you. No, I think I think everybody can 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 play a role. I uh, I just know that it's never been easier from yeah. an algorithmic standpoint. Mm-hmm. It's, ne- it's never been easier to make music and make content, mm-hmm. and it's never been easier to distribute it. Yeah, right. So I just I see that, and then I see the lack of output, and yeah. I go, oh man, nah, this, I, this bumps me out. No, nah, trust me. I I think for all the people that work hard, and I feel like this is what happens with the OGs, and you're you're naturally in that category now where it's like. You've worked so hard 
to like really get to where you where you're at mm-hmm. and you know how much it takes and you see this little dude or whoever wet behind the ears excited but not really like willing and you're kind of like all right bro like you know you're you're doing half of the work in your bed and, it, and it's like you don't got time for that mm-hmm. like you said like you really don't got time to really just pour into something so again it's like if you if there was somebody else you could point them to like when they reach that that level like okay they're making yeah. good music okay now tap in with so-and-so mm-hmm. he's gonna get you on every vlog he's mm-hmm. gonna get you at every show yeah. we can't do that yet yeah well i just been referring them to nick d's book which is great We're like go listen to nick d's audiobook and just do everything he tells you to do and study him and like that's your best shot yeah shout out nick d man like nick d definitely has been given the sauce that has been planting a lot of seeds yeah. i'm just i'm seeing and it's cool because i get to be kind of behind the scenes with caleb and alex and see the conversations they're having mm-hmm. Even with their success at the, as an independent artist, being a Christian independent artist is difficult. Like mm-hmm. for Caleb right now, he's reaching these barriers because he's not trying to compromise mm-hmm. with working with certain labels that have certain tracks they try to take him through. Mm-hmm. But then he's also trying to remain independent and stay, mm-hmm. you know, solid with his, with his uh, lyrical content. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, we are reaching these ceilings. I just feel like Caleb and Kyron gave everybody the blueprint, man. Yeah, they, I just I just feel like they just laid it they, out. They gave a blueprint like, to one piece, like yeah. to a big, to the biggest piece. The social media is the biggest piece. Yeah, not for everybody though. Okay, give me an example. Like, there's some artists that they're just really good at writing. Okay, they're really good at writing Christian music, and again, there's just I I just feel like. I just feel like not everybody has to go that route. And if they can't go that route, they're still not they're still not a direction like they can go. Like if if you get what I'm saying, like how do I put it? Cause I'm I just feel like again, role wise, I get what you're saying. People do need to work their butt off. But there's just not somebody right there side by side, like really encouraging these these young cats to just keep going all of us need that little push like for me i i did need some people to just just call me out of my mundane like Mm -hmm. djing weddings and stuff like that there's still not enough people just like okay nah we we can look to all these big platforms but nah we had a word of god like Mm -hmm. if we could if we could develop stuff that actually is just biblically centered Mm -hmm. and really just overtly christian like that's cool it's possible yeah i mean i think that's why you're here yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you you are that voice. Yeah. You know, because a lot a lot a lot of us, if I'm honest, we just we just ain't got the patience. That's all I'm, I'm feeling. I'm tired of telling y'all the same thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now I'm gonna show y'all. Now we're mm-hmm. gonna drop a song a week all yep. year, and I'm gonna rub it in your face. That's how I feel as too. a 40 year old rapper, 39 year old rapper, <laughs> yep. and then you're really not gonna have any excuses. Like mm-hmm. that's what I'm on because I'm like, yo, there's too much consolidated talent yeah. here. Uh, for it not to just yeah you know like yeah. that's be how real that's kind of where you are at too nah, right I, now like he's, he's been dropping <laughs> music you, consistently recently yeah. because again with the tastemaker Tuesday where he's critiquing artists up and coming artists um oftentimes he will give them the blueprint for yeah. certain things and it does kind of involve what you're saying yeah. as well like the the behind the scenes work mm-hmm. and maybe a couple months ago he started he made a song because he produces as well. And he was like, man, like, I'm not going to overthink it. Like, I know this is biblically sound. I know, like, I got it. Let me just drop it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And after that, he just kept writing and he kept making music. And he was dropping a song every Monday. And he's like, all right, like, I've said it enough. Now let me show you how Mm -hmm, to do it and mm -hmm. just watch it pop off. And on top of that, just watching the artistry grow Mm -hmm. week by week, month Mm -hmm. by month by month. Like, that is how you get to that Mm -hmm. excellence. Yeah. Because that's your, your Patreon is it like popped off because of the consistency, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everything for me is consistent. People know like it's every day, three posts or something's popping off. Mm-hmm. Like this event is like a culmination of just daily disciplines for yeah. sure. Yeah, that's incredible. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, man. So I, I, we could talk about that. Nah, I get you. I, I feel it. The, the flip side to this conversation, by the way, is what happens on the opposite end of gospel music mm-hmm. where they actually work really hard, but then it's like overproducing the That's songs a good example. <laughs> where you're you're re-recording records and uh-huh. you've got 10 writers on a record yeah. and like y'all really overcooking this and then there's not enough just music being made mm-hmm. right i think that's the flip side on the on the yeah. like the ccm gospel side is like everyone got their formulas and they want to go to yeah. christian radio and all that stuff 
has a utility, but I'm just like, yo, the, you got to feed the people. Yeah. Like, you got to feed the people. That's why Maverick City blew up. They, yeah. fed, right. they fed the people. They kept giving it's people true. what they wanted. And, 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 and the mixes aren't fly. Like, some yeah. of the mixes are dusty. It some just of meets the, the need. It just yeah. meets the need. Yeah. And it's good enough. They're all good enough that even them as a C plus yeah. is still going to do better than a bunch of A's that are overcooked and take a year to get yeah. a yeah. song. And out, that's you why know? I feel like joyful noise and I always have to implement what, what I came here to talk about. Cause I feel like this is the solution in a lot of ways where it's that bridge between industry. Cause I have an event now I've, I've Emmanuel the prophet, I've Gavi, two people that are part of labels mm -hmm. or tied into different things. And I also have Keon Boone, and a few other artists that are independent, and I'm bringing them both to this event to just present music or hang out mm -hmm. and just network and connect. And I'm like, that's cool because we just need those relationships. Yeah. We don't, and it has it doesn't have to be an agenda where this is a, a artist meetup or you have to pay hundred dollars to meet this person. But mm -hmm. everybody's hanging out. I don't have a green room or a VIP mm -hmm. like. Everybody's yeah. hanging out. Yeah, the community <laughs> aspect sounds fly. Uh, what do you what do you charge for the events? Like someone's coming to an event. What, what is the cover at the door? Are there tiers and VIP it's packages? Tiers. It's okay. tiers. So I do the early bread at twenty. Okay. Uh, I bump it five every time I reach a certain goal of tickets. So uh, it's just so because I budgeted off the ticket sales as of now. Okay, so twenty. That's, so not, max that's not bad. 35. Max is thirty five. Thirty five. And there's no VIP packages. Nah, we okay. did it once. Okay. We did it once, we but saw how it worked. The main thing is just. Under promise and over delivering. There you go. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Now, what about you said there's other Christian businesses there? I'm assuming there's like mm -hmm. a vendor area yep. and all that kind of stuff. I got vendors, I got food trucks, I okay. got even my security guard. He's a Christian. Okay. He has like, I'm trying to keep it like even, yeah, top to bottom, like yeah. this Christian. I got my live stream team, I got a sound company. Yep. Everybody's being hired. And You're paid. live streaming to YouTube or Instagram? YouTube. Okay. Yeah. I, still, I, met, I totally missed that. So my apologies. I didn't know you were live streaming. No, nah, you're good. Because I'm really, I'm asking all these questions because I'm, one, I think people have questions. Two, definitely. I'm genuinely curious. That's, on that's what, why what I want to talk flows. about it. Like, yeah, I yeah. can talk about the artist stuff, but like yeah. for me, that's my specialty really is in hosting hospitality yeah. and yeah. stuff. But yeah. So what is it like for the vendors? I'm assuming there's a super separate room. They you got got clothing companies. What else? Uh, yeah, so else God, that? yeah, God's glory. A few other people. I try to keep it limited to three. Okay. Um, depend on it depends on the venue because mm -hmm. if I can't fit, you know, I'm not gonna have a million people, you know, selling their shirts and stuff. Also, quality control, you know, mm -hmm. making sure they're actual solid. So, yeah, I have like three. Um, right now it's like uh merch or clothing, and then I had for the last event I had a coffee company providing like coffee, virtual okay. coffee. Um, one of my one of my people there attending actually worked for Gatorade, so mm -hmm. they supplied Gatorade. Mm. So we had some product placement for the first time. They had food trucks because it's consistent; they could bank on it. Usually, I have about two food trucks, so they have some variety. Yeah, but I try to. Based on the size, obviously, I just don't want to oversaturate yeah. and have that. Yeah, stuff I, if I'm thinking back, like I'm thinking what 10, 15 years ago before I had kids and I was doing more stuff like there wasn't the, the things that we had was like obviously Christian rap concerts. Yeah. You'd have conferences, which were a little different because mm -hmm. if you weren't interested in like being in leadership at a church, like you probably weren't pulling up to Catalyst Conference and yeah. spending 150 bucks on the ticket. And then you, we out here, I don't know if you guys remember this, but we out here had the P4CM events. This is, um, mm. you guys heard of Poets in Autumn? This yes. is our Jackie Hill okay, Perry yeah, yeah. and all. So yeah. before it was Poets in Autumn, it was called P4CM. Mm -hmm. And that would be like 3,000 cap room. They'd right. do it once a yep. year, one big event. And they would have vendors, food trucks, mm -hmm. all the all these sorts of I things. I remember the organizer, I met him, I forget his name, but the dude putting it together, you probably met him, but... I remember he said that it started from what he was doing started as just a party, mm -hmm. kind of a hangout, mm -hmm. and then he started adding elements. Yeah, and then they, they scaled it up. But even in that, what, what what I think is unique about what you guys are doing is that it's not we're all sitting looking on a stage mm -hmm. of this elite level of 10 performers right. doing yeah. their thing, that it's more community-based. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm huge on, like, just dismantling that, that um, stardom mentality mm -hmm. that has been created, mm -hmm. unfortunately, in the Christian space mm -hmm. where – you hide the artist backstage, you put them up on stage, mm -hmm. or backstage, you put them up on stage, and then they go back, and you got to pay extra money for access. Mm -hmm. And I believe, personally, it creates an unhealthy perspective mm -hmm. of humans, yeah. of Christians, and I, I think that what is also causing a lot of, like, just, just misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. Like, when that artist gets caught up in controversy and all this other stuff, we're already holding them on that mm. pedestal. So my event, even I DJ off the stage. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't know if you heard of Boiler Room. 
Mm-hmm. But it's um, Boiler Room is a a streaming club platform. Mm-hmm. They just broadcast clubs all over the world mm-hmm. and highlight the DJs. They mm-hmm. have the DJ in the center, and they lo- they stream it. They have the crowd in the back, mm-hmm. and it's a beautiful aspect because you see ver- you see online like a DJ interacting with the people. Mm-hmm. It's a good it's time. It's the DJ's back, and did you see the so crowd? So the camera's facing the DJ. Oh, it's facing the DJ. But the crowd is behind them. Okay. And everybody's, like, facing the camera. So I've I've uh, implemented that element in my event where I'm I'm in the center, uh-huh. the crowd's behind me, mm-hmm. and we're all just vibing together. Now, are you, you guys just streaming it to YouTube for free, or are you also charging for virtual it's free. tickets? Yeah. It's free. Shout out Full Sail. There's a... Uh, Sound engineer, music production huh. comp, uh, school. Yep, yep. And I've, I've, sale, I've, yeah. I've been uh, gracious enough to have some teachers there helping yeah. and some students. Now, is the goal to have it at the same venue every single time? No, or it's, do you it's a mix pop it up? up. It's a pop up event. We based on numbers, and I, I just try to I just try to keep it at a, a rate where it's packed. Mm-hmm. So right now, like I got some advice from different people, and every event I try to like just scale up 50 tickets okay so it started as 100 in september it was 100 i did two events at 100 and then it went viral and started getting crazy so i bumped it to two i was selling that out a week before so i was like let me go 250 and then i just progressively build Mm -hmm. because i'm just heavy on managing little because it could get crazy (laughs) yeah and i think the end goal too is not to be like super massive yeah because like even with like those larger conferences and things that you were talking about Oftentimes, people don't necessarily get seen mm. or acknowledged as a person. Yeah. And, mm. like, that's our end-all, be-all. Like, we want to make sure you feel mm-hmm. seen, you feel heard, and and feel welcomed mm-hmm. as an individual. Yeah. So we the goal is to keep it fairly small. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. it's kind of like Jesus where he's like, you know, don't tell no one. Like, yeah, And then it just keeps growing <laughs> yeah. and growing. I'm like, Max, Max would be right now in my head based on what we have to manage between me and my wife like about four or five hundred like at max and even that i'm like 300 has been a great amount mm-hmm. yeah and i've even i've been studying like I, I, I was put on to like roman colonization and stuff like mm-hmm. that the number of influence that you need to like change a city is about 300 mm. so i was like yo if i could hit 300 every time and implement principles mm-hmm. and speak to them about the gospel mm-hmm. and everybody's like orlando is like Joyful noise is being talked about amongst everybody. And mm-hmm. I'm not even like, like adding like fluff to it, but yeah. people hit me like, yo, like I was getting cut by my barber. He's not even mm-hmm. Christian, bro. You tell me about joyful mm-hmm. noise. And everybody's talking about <laughs> it in dope. Orlando. So So are you in terms of the the like the talk about it in Orlando, um you're you're hoping to keep it in Orlando or you want to expand it outside of Orlando? I want to expand it, but it's more in a I guess for lack of better terms, like a church planning sense, mm-hmm. like just go into cities, teach them the ideal of how I'm doing it and give them the sauce, the mm-hmm. blueprint, mm-hmm. and then throw an event to show them. Mm. So next year would be when I kind of like campaign it and take it to different cities. Mm-hmm. Uh, but definitely want to like stay, stay local for the sake of us just enjoying like being local and hanging out and building with the city. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm even talking to hotels, restaurants. Mm-hmm. Like one thing as I study clubs is like clubs are, essential to cities mm-hmm. like it brings people to the city mm-hmm. like it, it's building like relationships amongst other businesses and i want that for the christian space like i want us to be respected amongst the city because we're meeting a lot of needs because right. i'm getting a bunch of people so attention and gathering is like what else can i do with this mm-hmm. okay maybe joyful noise can now have an outreach event together and we're teaming up we're bringing the churches together like i want to continue to utilize that that community aspect and really reach the city. How much time are you spending speaking at these? Because I, I know you said you got specific things you say. Yeah. And when you're speaking, is it just like instrumental music tucked behind you or is mm. it like completely silence? I'm curious about that. Sometimes I forget to play the music in the back, but like in the beginning, usually I lower the music and I it's like a 510, like, you know, mini, mini encouragement. Like I make sure the scripture, like I share every event I've made it like intention. Like I share Psalm 100 as a fool because I, I feel like it explains everything, the whole mission statement really. Yeah. Uh, I read that in the beginning. I read it in the intermission because some people come late. Mm-hmm. And then at the end, it started as us just sharing a thank you and a testimony. But Holy Spirit moment, like Holy Spirit really pushing me to like share more. Um, you know, I, I really am getting more prompted to at least give people like a, a call to Jesus. Because mm. pe- like 
And I want to say this too, all the pushback and comments and all that stuff, I love that stuff. Mm -hmm. If there wasn't any pushback, I, I can't get better at mm -hmm. this. Like you got to have some, some, some iron, like iron sharp as iron, the mm -hmm. real, the real <laughs> iron, like some resistance. So I love the resistance. And I think one thing that people have been calling me to do is like, you do have to give them that call, that mm -hmm. opportunity to like surrender to Jesus. And I've been working on that because I don't want to just do it how I've seen it. Yep. But at the end of the day, like there are people coming like some people coming from club culture and broken situations where yeah. at the end, what I do right now is I have everybody pray for each other mm. or I pray for one or two people that have like a special like prayer request. Mm -hmm. And that's been very powerful. Mm. Um, and it's been cool. like, it's crazy. You just don't know what people go through. Yeah. So like right. it was the third event. Man. Somebody came, they're like, yo, my house just burned down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're just here trying to meet with people and just get away. Lost all their musical stuff. Yeah. Oh Somebody's crazy. like, yo, I just survived heart surgery. Mm -hmm. Somebody was like, man, my cousin's in a coma. Right I was, we're praying yeah. for each of those people. And I'm just like, man, yeah. if I'm going to do this, I'm going to be here all night. So yeah. It's like you don't know what they're coming mm -hmm. to this moment with. Yeah. But they are all looking for that encouragement. Yeah. But to answer your question, I'm still figuring it out. But I try to keep it brief, but intentional. <clears throat> yeah. I think... Uh, the pushback, I, has there been a lot of pushback? I, I saw one video that got torched, and it was the young lady from L.A. God told us to create a Christian club in Los Angeles, and we have gotten so much backlash, y'all. People told me that I was a Jezebel. All right, I'm at the Chick-fil-A drive through I mean, when I was going to respond to this, I, I was thinking about saying something super petty, like, oh, you know, God told me to start a Christian strip club. You know, we're just redeeming what the world has taken away. But then I was like, you know what? Let me <laughs> let me try to address this a little more seriously. There's a lot going on here. First of all, did God tell you that? Also, why do you need a Christian nightclub? Like, what are y'all doing there? Do you need to dance every week? Like, you can sing in church. You know, that's what we do, right? We sing in church. Um, if you need to dance and get your jiggy on, you know, historically, the church has done those types of things in festivals and events. Uh, which, yeah, they have done that for sure. You're not wrong there. But to create an establishment that is known for just dancing and known by the world as places where you do stuff that's pretty naughty, um, why would you do that? Like, what what's the point of that? What is the true intention there? And that's what makes me, and I think everyone who is challenging this, question whether or not God really told you this. Because did God told you this or did you want to do this? Yeah, they've been that's on sad. Katrina's head. Yeah, that yeah. Was, it was just the way she framed it. Yeah, you know, I believe God that's... told us yeah. to start uh, <laughs> yeah. a nightclub, a yeah. Christian nightclub, and we're like, ooh. They're very passionate. They, 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 they lit her up. Because you also, there's also the, it's, it's like, there's the Christian nightclub aspect, which is one conversation we're having. Then there's the theology God. and the framework of the mm. God told yeah. me, right. and people that are just instantly repulsed by that because of the trauma they've experienced in certain charismatic exactly. and Pentecostal movements, exactly. right? Mm -hmm. So there's also, that's like a trigger for people. It's like, yeah. oh, really? Like, God told you? Yeah. How'd he tell you? In a burning bush? Yeah. You know what I mean? Right, right. Like, there's also, and I'm not, I'm not knocking her. I'm no, just saying good. the way she framed that I already that felt kind of like, oh, I don't know if you want to pose it like that. Because <laughs> that's not my thing. Like, based on people's upbringing spiritually, mm -hmm. like, they have certain ways of saying things. Mm -hmm. I think... Yeah, people are definitely triggered. If you look at our comment sections, mm -hmm. I've learned that a lot of times <laughs> people that are in the comment section, it's like if you get put on blast, like in public, you feel like you have to defend yourself. So you get both ends of that in my comment section. Somebody says this isn't godly, then somebody responds to them and saying, no, shut up, you're not godly. Yeah. The next thing you know, they're like going at it and then vice versa. So a lot of the public like stuff can be kind of cringe but unfortunate i'm like y'all really can just dm each other and do this Here, here's here's my thought i think mm -hmm. when there's a lack of clarity on what something is right. there becomes a, a confusion around it yeah mm -hmm. so what you everything you've described to me sounds like you and your life experience both of you guys examining felt needs mm -hmm. and providing a service and a product around felt needs yeah right. this sounds like christian entrepreneurship this yeah. is what that sounds like right yes yeah. which is similar to what we do when and it, and in christian entrepreneurship you can minister to people yeah right. but when you start framing this as god told me yeah this is a prophetic thing then it starts being confusing and it starts feeling like oh you're trying to start a ministry mm -hmm. and and that's where like 
is this Chick-fil-A and in and out <laughs> or is this a church? Yeah. You're, from everything I'm gathering, you're saying this is Chick-fil-A and in and out mm -hmm. We serve a need. People like fried chicken. We give right. you the best fried chicken because people are going to eat fried chicken regardless. Facts. And the stuff they're going to get from this place right here is going to be worse in quality for them. So we're going to give you the best. And we're going to give our employees Sunday off. And we're going to do things in an That's a great manner. way to put it. Right. I think that's very clear. Mm -hmm. And then there's no confusion around it versus mm -hmm. like saying, this is a ministry. God told me this is a church. This blah, blah. Yeah. Then it becomes confusing for people. And then people go, well, wait a minute. Why do you need this? Yeah. yeah. Right. You versus you want you want this because it's a it's yeah. there's a there's a opportunity there's mm -hmm. an audience for it a good entrepreneur go sees a problem we have the solution we're gonna solve that problem that's perfect. and in that we love Jesus and people are gonna get ministered to yep right now nah, you got it you posed it perfectly go ahead. yeah I was gonna say um, there was a post that he made on the joyful noise page and there's this meme of this kid talking about how he loves corn. And he's like, you know, everybody doesn't have to like corn, mm -hmm. but at least try it once. <laughs> and I think it's beautiful because it's like, this is here mm -hmm. and it's available for those who want it. We're not trying to force anyone into it. Mm -hmm. And we're not trying to say this is the end all be all need, as mm -hmm. you're saying. And even to the last point you were just saying about um, the comment section, when he he has such a heart for reconciliation, like the Lord knew that I needed this man because he's helping me to develop that within myself. But when people are going crazy in the comments, he'll inbox them and he'll be like, okay, like let's have dialogue. Like he doesn't run away from the fight. Mm. And he also does, doesn't run to it with like this angry mean face. He comes to it with the sword, the word of God, and with a heart mm. of compassion for that person. Mm -hmm. he, he really does live out like forgive them for they know not what they do. That's good. And so as he has this dialogue with certain people that that come up to him personally, he'll even offer them, you know, like a free ticket. Like you can come see what this is about mm -hmm. so that you can get that clarity and that understanding. And I'm not saying he's giving free tickets to everybody who wants to argue. Yeah, I know. Right? But <laughs> but, it, but it is funny. Like, I don't want to come because I might burn if I step inside. And it's like, all right. like Yeah. yeah but, but he's just like, you know, it's not something secretive that sure. we're doing. Yeah. But if you are curious, like. You're free to come. Yeah. yeah. On your point, though, I love how you framed it because I feel like that's what happened with Christian concerts. Mm -hmm. Like, there's artists that's trying to hold these events, and then it's like, okay, this is dope. Like, dope experience. And then churches sometimes feel like, man, I'm trying to stay relevant, trying to keep the youth engaged. And then they're like, okay, great. Let's let's adapt some, some parts of this and mm -hmm. then use it as a way to, um, you know, get people to our church. And I'm not saying that's every church, but I think, yeah, Christian entrepreneurship is... Something that still hasn't, I guess, just caught wind yet, like how to properly do it, how to properly run business. And I think that also ties into the Christian artist situation. But anything Christian right now, I think people try to escape the excellent side mm -hmm. and replace it with faith. God mm -hmm. going to work it out. Mm -hmm. But, man, the faith in just our di the faith that the discipline that comes from our faith mm -hmm. and the excellence that the Bible actually instructs us mm -hmm. to provide mm -hmm. is causing us to have, have better business. And I think not, not enough people are working hard to do that. Mm -hmm. And they're just like slapping faith over it and hoping that their church like covers all their mess. Yeah. yeah. Cause I went through that too. When I first started throwing events 10 years ago um, at my church, I was hoping that everybody would just pull up at my church. Mm -hmm. And then when they didn't pull up, I was like, man, bro, they don't get it. Like, mm. man, like I got this party and, and, or, or I would do an event and it's tied with my church and there's like 100, 200 people there. And I'm like, dang, everybody came because mm. I got this great event and God was humbling me out because that's how I tried to do it more independent, less people would come. Mm -hmm. To the point I was throwing parties where it was like 20 people and I had to learn to be grateful mm. for that because right. mm -hmm. I was like, these are 20 people that actually want to be here. Mm -hmm. right. And 10 years later, I've, I've progressively built that. So everybody's seeing kind of like what's came to surface mm -hmm. from me working on small parties that actually meet needs mm -hmm. and actually I'm tending to people and showing hospitality. So I think that is a great point. Uh, and that's what happens a lot of times is people get the ministry aspect mm -hmm. confused with the business. Yep. They want to make it a nonprofit where I'm grateful. Shout out Poncho and, uh, you know, Sanchez family. He was like, cause I was, some people were like, make it a nonprofit. So you get funding by the uh, state mm -hmm. and by the city and the churches and I talked to Poncho, he's like, dude, like that's not even ethical to say yeah. it's a outreach nonprofit, but you really do got to pay bills. Mm -hmm. and it's like, that's not even. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. That, that, uh, that funding comes with strings attached, bro. Nonprofit <laughs> yeah. funding Always. comes with strings attached. And that, yeah. And that's what happens to a lot of these events where they're like, they're trying to meet the needs of the funding people, mm -hmm. but then the people 
the audience wants something else. Mm -hmm. right. They're having we have a lot of overproduced v events, and that's mm -hmm. what I saw with Caleb when I did the events with him. Mm -hmm. They have a hundred thousand dollar production, and these kids aren't even watching. Mm -hmm. They don't even want to mm -hmm. be there because mm -hmm. it. They're like, man, I just want to play games. Mm. I'm like, if y'all just set up a video game night with the games they already have at home, they would be satisfied. Yep, yeah. yep. That's good. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. you guys are newlyweds. Yeah. There's a lot of complaints I get on YouTube and online. Oh, Ruslan, you don't know what it's like. You've been with your wife for 20 years. Oh, the snap. game's changed. <laughs> you ain't have internet dating. I just can't find anyone. I can't find a good girl. There's no good girls. All the girls are from the streets. All the guys trash. They're all right. <laughs> that's that's the conversations I'm hearing. Yeah. Now there's gonna be people that come to these events mm -hmm. who gonna want to meet somebody. Yeah. Right? right. So as you guys who are you've been you just celebrated one year of marriage. About to next be month. March next yeah. month. Okay. What do you what do you guys one what do y'all make of just the overall dating world? Mm. Right. And then two. Based on an event like this, I'm assuming there's going to be people that meet at an event like this, yep. which, mm -hmm. which is which is good. Yep. We want people to get married yep. who love Jesus and mm -hmm. have godly families. Um, so what do, you, what do you guys make of the whole d the dating aspect of, of it all? And, and what wisdom would you guys have as newlyweds that y'all got married? You guys seem to be doing great. You're entrepreneurial. You're building yeah. a life together, right? You guys are, are different. You're more of the free spirit mm -hmm. uh, spender. You're more of the nerd <laughs> and, yeah. the, and the stickler, right? Yep. Uh, which, which every couple tends to want. You need it. Yeah, yep. You need both. Need so what, what, what do you guys make of just dating in 2024 and all, all the stuff that's presented to people? Start. I don't know you excited to talk. You can go, babe. All right. <laughs> nah, um, man, for dating culture in today's age, I'm no expert. Uh, I just got friend zoned enough to learn, like, okay, there's more to life. <laughs> um, yeah. And for me, the big change that I had to realize is, well, I'm going to say first Timothy 4, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's like, look at younger women as sisters, older women as mothers, like the aspect. It starts there, and then it goes towards... If you have an intention, if you see somebody that's special, I mean, that Boaz concept, like, meeting their needs is huge. Like, not in a manipulative way, but you have to genuinely care about people in general mm -hmm. uh, before you get caught up in trying to, like, get what you want. Mm. Yeah. So for dating culture and today, like, man, it's so tempting. And I know a lot of people just feel so lonely in today's culture, and they want to, to fulfill that need uh, or that that desire and just have somebody there by thy side. But man, in the Christian culture, we just try to skip, we try to skip the, um, try to skip through the process. We need God first. Mm. Yeah. For everybody, it, it sounds cliche, but the, the formula remains the same. Learn how to build your relationship with God yeah. and learn how to build your relationship with God's people. And from there, the significant other is going to be clear as day. Because for her, when I met her, it wasn't an oh snap, she bad, like, man, and she loved God. Okay, let me see how I could rears her up, you feel me? And <laughs> I'm like, nah, it started as, oh, hey, like, you have a book? Cool, how can I help you move that book forward? I'm going to promote your book on stage. I'm going to say what's up. Like, that's cool, I don't see authors like that. Or, man, you're trying to work on this lesson, this Bible study lesson? Like, cool. I genuinely was in a place where I wanted to help her. Um, and from there, what came about it, was recognizing what she can do for what I had going on and we we saw the we saw the compatibility so I think I think the big thing yeah you got to fall in love with God and learn how to build your relationship with God and be biblically centered on that and learn how to meet the needs of the people around you and the wife she will reveal herself for mm -hmm. the guys it will be clear as day I, I wish I could have a better uh, explanation for that, but that I feel like that's as simple as it could get. That's good. <laughs> no, that's, that, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. So um, as he was saying, a lot of the, I guess, discipline, if you will, came from being friend zoned a lot. For me, it came from having a lot of traumatic experiences mm. with relationships um, that just really unveiled the fact that I was really struggling with self-worth issues, mm. um, self-esteem, self-love, all of these things. And so once I kind of got tired of going through those circles, I was like, OK, I found the Lord and I really want to do this like 10 toes. Like I want the real thing, God. And through my discipline and my dedication to God and I really got to know who I was as a woman and as a person, I started like ignoring men when they would come to me like 
I, I, I was able to identify their motives a lot quicker mm. because I knew my word and because I knew what God said about me and I knew how God was treating me. And I was like, okay, if he's not coming with that, like he could go because I'm good. Like me and God, we're solid. It's <laughs> great. And, you know, and on top of that, I was a very successful woman. I've been teaching for the last four years. I was an author by like 24, 25. And I was just working on my self-development. Mm -hmm. And I'm like a huge learner. As you called me earlier, I'm a nerd. Like I love growing myself as a person because I want to be an asset wherever I go. And I think that that's the first point, like to people who are dating is really to understand who God is and who you are in God, because that helps alleviate those self-worth issues that cause you to fall into pits that you were never meant to be in. I struggled with addiction at a young age mm. and just getting involved with a lot of different things that I would have otherwise avoided had I knew who I was. So Getting to know who you are as a woman, I know as women, oftentimes it's easy to idolize relationships and marriages. Um, I wasn't the, the whole Disneyland yeah, princess. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't something that I struggled with necessarily, um, but I understood like how loneliness could affect mm. your perception of life mm. and your hope for life. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, getting to know who you are in Christ and really developing yourself to be an asset wherever you go in yeah. the works in the workspace um in your family being that prayer warrior being that person who um is building your family up building yourself up daily as a result men are going to notice you and you're going to be seen as an asset for men and then having that discernment from God is going to help you be able to see, like, is this supposed to be a romantic thing? Am I supposed to kind of mentor him in a way? Because that that that's a, a legit thing, too. Right. Like having um, you got little bros. <laughs> yeah. Like having little, little bros okay. where you feel like you can pour into mm -hmm. in that way. There's no um, just those. Huh? They all want they all there's no such thing. Yeah, it's tough. Well, they all got a crush. It's like, Let's just go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, nah, nah, you're right. If, if you have the right... <laughs> That's just a different, different type of ring. No, you're good. She, she, she just now discovered that, like, yeah, not... Yeah. I think the main, I think the main thing is with the Men. right boundaries. <laughs> yeah. With the yes. right boundaries, yeah. you yeah. can keep them in their place and still teach them. Yeah. Because yeah. I feel like that for me, too. Like, yeah. yeah. I think it's maybe different now that you're married, mm -hmm. but when you were single, yeah. there was no such thing as a little... Dang, unless he's like a teenager, awkward. unless he's like in seventh grade and he's one of your students. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But even then, I even would then. bet they, the, you understand how men <laughs> are. No, nah, I've, been, I've been waking her up yeah. to it because yeah. she was like, ex, like discovering that. She's like, why every guy that like wants to like actually help, they would just want to. And I'm just like, it will get to that point. Oftentimes. Yeah. yeah. But, it, but yeah. it came from boundaries. <laughs> it came. It but came like, from right boundaries. Before we got together, I did have a lot of male friends that. Never verbalized. And you to shut me. that all down. Huh? Yeah, I shut it down. <laughs> but no, nah, even they even but now, they weren't. They weren't trying to push up on me though. Yeah. One and thing so, about her, it. looks is deceiving. Like she's from the like I was yeah. gonna say streets. They was gonna take that wrong. <laughs> she's from the trenches. Like yeah. she's from a, a rough area where like all the dudes around her legit was just kind of like it was. I was good in the hood. Yeah. Like I grew up with. Yeah. Trench people. Yeah. And so as a result, like. Coming to God, I understood to a degree my assignment was to show those people who Christ is. Mm -hmm. And, um, but yeah, okay, yeah. I feel like I'm going on. No, you're good. So, so, okay, so what do you got? So, this is what I appreciate just hearing a little bit of you guys' story. Yeah. Is I'm going to, I'm going to quote someone that people are going to be mad about, but this is one uh -oh. thing I think he got right. <laughs> okay. All right. Brace for impact. All right. I'm ready. Okay. So, a lot of what Kevin Samuels did. Oh, snap. <laughs> was to take apart people's unrealistic expectations. True. So he'd have people mm. call in. Yes. What do you want? He got to be six ah. foot tall. He mm -hmm. got to be my funny. ethnicity. Mm -hmm. He got to make six figures. He Matter of fact, he got to he got to make uh, 300K. Yeah, right, yeah. Right? right. And he would go through and he like, ma'am, that's 0.0%, 0.01% of the population. It's true. You're average at best. <laughs> right? That was the big <laughs> was viral. And I would love when he would be like... Is that what you're doing? Mm -hmm. Like, are you there yet? Because right. yeah. that was my MO. Like, if I am going to demand this of him, mm -hmm. I better be doing it she too. She caught me higher for sure. You yeah. know? Yeah. And so the point I, I, I was going to, to get to is that, well, one thing he said that was really spot on mm -hmm. was he said, you could either, 
as a man, build up and become this high value, high value man. man. <laughs> and as a woman, understand what a high value man wants because he doesn't want the same things you think. Like a high value man doesn't want another woman that makes six figures. Yeah. They want a woman that can come home and raise kids at some point, mm -hmm. right? That's most men, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't mean women can't work outside of the home. can't be entrepreneurs. <laughs> that's that's, that's not what I'm saying. Because I can just see the, 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 the comments Clip going that there. Man. But I'm saying, generally speaking, the things that we find attractive in the other yeah. isn't what the other... Like, you got to know what the person you're looking for is looking for, right? Yeah. right? But then he would say, or you can go and build an Ikea marriage. Mm. What's an Ikea marriage? An Ikea marriage is when you build a life together. Mm-hmm. Ikea, you get it, it comes in a box. Mm -hmm. You get to sit here and assemble the thing, <laughs> yeah. right? And so me and my wife have built an Ikea marriage. We was bo both broke, both broken, mm -hmm. yeah. both from the trenches, both with trauma, mm -hmm. both and and we built a life together over the course mm -hmm. of 20 years now yeah. that uh, we assembled the furniture ourselves. There was no delivery man. Yeah. There was no walking into a store and mm -hmm. having it sent and set up perfectly. We had to build it ourselves, and it took more effort, and I... Hate assembling I see uh, IKEA <laughs> furniture uh, because it's hard. Yeah, right. It's hard work, and so it sounds like just hearing a bit about your story. Your story, like you guys are building yeah. something Definitely. together instead of like you got it all together, you got it all together, and now yeah. we fun be this power couple. Yeah, and we gonna right. <laughs> you guys are building something together. Yes, and I'm I'm grateful for it, man, because I've literally seen what ten years in Christ as a single dude looks like that has no like just kind of raw materials and then now one year as a married christian man and what has happened just in a year is a testament to the to what can happen when you have a, a solid solid sidekick and you you've waited but the the also what you said that ties into Kevin, kevin samuels and that topic and then what she said as far as being an asset is just intentionality mm -hmm. yeah. people aren't real with themselves and people aren't real with people around them mm -hmm. it's kind of like a just kind of a consequence when you're not real with yourself mm -hmm. usually you end up becoming deceitful mm -hmm. to people around you and a lot of people this ties into everything in the christian rap space too a lot of people aren't real with themselves so they're hard to it's hard for to be lyrically real because they're not it's that it's that for sure and i think for us the biggest thing right now where we've been at and even when we first met it was intentionality mm -hmm. you know i made sure it was clear like you know i'm here for you as a friend even though my heart was like, man, it would after a while I was like, it would be cool to like rock with her. I, I wanted to I wanted to make <laughs> I wanted to make sure be, because of her experiences, she knew that I genuinely do want to support her as a mm. sister in Christ. Mm. Yeah. Now I did fight off that. You can have that, but if you can really deny yourself and, and just say, Hey, I'm content with you winning as somebody that's not even my wife or my girl. Yeah. I wanna just see you win. You could still have that, even mm. with that heart of like, no, she's fire. Um, that's yeah. I'm gonna just say this. I was the complete opposite with my wife. <laughs> where, where? I was very clear to set expectations. Yeah, we started dating. We made it official. No more guy friends. Mm -hmm. Like it was. I was like very straight to the point. Yeah. Because yeah. nah. but what? Well, because I also knew all of her guy friends and they were that, my friends. And oh I was yeah. Like, I know what all you jokers are about. That's like, real. Nah, we not gonna have any of that. It was different for me, man. Because I had to. Again, I. <laughs> oh, you want to talk, baby? Well, I wanted to share. The conversation that we had um so i was the one who told him how i felt first yeah okay because, she shot her okay. shot <laughs> yeah because like he's saying he was so intentional about just caring about me as a person and mm -hmm. as an individual there were no ulterior motives and well well, well there there were well, he wasn't, <laughs> You'd be surprised. He wasn't moving I, on it them. was it was because i mean you being attracted to her is in and of itself an ulterior motive yeah so yes which is there's nothing wrong no, that's with what that. i'm saying it's nothing wrong with that yeah I was I at this just, point. I was so friend zone. I was just like, if she's good, he I'm was probably, numb, bro. I was like, I'm probably <laughs> yeah. not gonna. I was more. I was more like, okay, like she's gonna be great yeah, like, yeah, with yeah. somebody. Like yeah. he was helping me. Like I was doing a Bible study at that point in life, and he was like, listen, like I can help you make this word better. Like I won't be at the next one, but you know, you can share with me, mm -hmm. and, and we can go through some things, and um, just teaching more engaging questions for the people, so they will open up easier and things like that. And so I was just like, okay, like this guy is super cool. Like he got like some coffee gift card from an event he did. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I don't really drink coffee, but like it's mm -hmm. all you. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, okay, like he's really cool. And he hasn't said he likes me yet. Mm -hmm. He's not trying to push up. And so I ended up saying like, you know, I wouldn't be open to something mm -hmm. if, if that's something you would be interested in. And She threw me an alley-oop. It was so cool because it wasn't aggressive. It mm -hmm. was like we were... 
I was literally, I invited her to church because she came to the city. Yeah. And I was like, okay, you need a church. Come pull up. But then I was trying to set up a hangout with all the other like singles and nobody was free. Everybody happened to go to Disney World that God's day. Plan. And it was literally <laughs> just me and her on a lunch date unintentionally. And then now she's like, I'm talking, I'm talking to her about the theology of baptism and all this other stuff. <laughs> Just, just all the stuff she don't care about. I was Literally. like, oh, he's so have a studious. I'm talking about Whoa. church history I'm and when, be, <laughs> when baptismal regeneration. I'm trying to be so neutral because I'm Yo. like, dang, it's already awkward. I don't want her to feel like she's on a date. Funny. I was literally trying to play it safe. And then she's like, Yo. I love it. She was like, yo, what's up? Go yeah, ahead. I was like, what are your intentions? With Come me? on. That's what I asked him. Come on. And he like went in circles. Even I was, was like, I'm like... trying to, I, I want you to make it to heaven, sister. I <laughs> yeah, want you to, I want you to be <laughs> right with God. She's like, all right. <laughs> I was like, okay, he loved Jesus for real, but like, I'm right yeah, here. Yeah. Yeah. And um, in, in back to the intentionality piece is that in that conversation, he was like, you know, you are attractive. And um, even with that, I'm not looking for that right now. But if we were to do it, these are a couple of pinpoints that I need us to focus on hmm. going into it. Come on. He's like, I'm saving my first kiss for the altar. So you can scratch After that out. Christ. Okay. And yes. then he was like, what else did you say, babe? You were like, I oh, need to yeah. meet your parents I need, I need to meet your. I, I need to go to your you. church. I need to see what you're about theologically. Come yeah, on. he's like, because yeah. you know, people are like, I'm Christian, but like that <laughs> yeah, looks yeah. different. Yeah. 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 So so he had a couple of um, mm -hmm. points that he, were, he was like, we need to cross this before we even think about dating yeah. and all of that. And I was like, ooh, <laughs> he <laughs> don't even know. Like, yeah. that's really that right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, but it was huge. It was huge for us. Us, it really did help us um i'm grateful because it's just stuff i learned yeah. from different people so from that conversation mm -hmm. how long until you guys were married that was the conversation that was, was august or we something? met in june conversation oh, was, was august. in august we started dating september in we were just kind of like feeling each other out not mm -hmm. physically pause. he was hanging out with my family <laughs> coming to family mm -hmm. birthdays and stuff trying yeah. to get to see my background but even then like we got to a point where i was like all right we should just pray together every day because mm -hmm. there was just a lot of different things we were trying to figure out mm -hmm. and it just i really couldn't find an answer because we had our different churches so we we're like do you go to my church do i go to your church do we just that in third so this we, is after you guys already started dating this is literally before september because okay. we we're like yeah. so august we had the combo September mm -hmm. was when we were I was kind of like we need to do this this and this and I was like I need to meet I need to meet your family I want you to meet my family because I, I was at that point now I'm 31 she's 25 about to be 26 at that time you really approached it like a real courtship I I did I did <laughs> shout out um dang I forgot the books but I read them like five <laughs> to six years ago yeah. yeah we started reading a book on prayer together at this point so we were really just trying to uh, receive the guidance and instruction from God yeah and even at that point, like, I remember praying. I was like, God, like, if this is not your will, mm -hmm. I still pray for him as a person, as a uh, um, your son. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to say brother in Christ because that gets weird. Yeah. But <laughs> I was just like, as your son, like, I want your will to be done in his life. And if yep. that's not with me, then so be it. Yeah. So we were really, like, pulling back our will to, okay. to do it the right way this time. Because we both was legit just single, single, like, enjoying, like, content with God. Yeah. Like, okay, <clears throat> like, if I start dating, it's clear as day because I'm really, yeah. I'm really doing my thing right now. So like, conversation happens in August. We family meet each other. March. October, you were married by... <laughs> March. Yeah, March. So dating in engaged October, in engaged in December, yeah. married Which by March. Which, that's a fun story. November, I uh, got booked to do a show with Hovey, uh -huh. and it was in Virginia, but it was a Florida weather. You get a hurricane, hurricane storm, hurricanes. whatever. And I'm like, dang, I can't do the event. Like, this is a good opportunity, but I guess I can't do it. She's like, no, we can drive. And at that time, I didn't have a car, and she had a hoopty. <laughs> but I was like, there's no way. Your car ain't going to make it. I ain't got the bread. She's like, no, nah, we're going to pray about it. We're going to figure it out. And she was offended because I was like, no, nah, we ain't going to make it. Like, stop playing that game. Like, yeah. you, you don't even like driving. But then at that moment, she was mad. She was, you could see it, but she really did like pray through it. We figured it out and we actually did a road trip together up to the show. It was like an 11 hour drive. Yeah. So that drive, Respect. you know, road, <laughs> road trips are really help you determine yeah. if she's, that was all I needed to see. Yeah. It was the best road trip ever. And even on this, talk about boundary and for people dating, like, I was trying to get us separate rooms. I was like, Hovey, like, can we get separate rooms? Because, like, I don't want to get any situation. Yeah. Right. But he couldn't. But we still was able to manage yeah. in the same room. Because at that time, I'm like, okay, now we're dating and, you know, those tensions. 
But then I started thinking like, okay, if we're going to be dating for a certain amount of time and we, I'm traveling and we in hotels, it's I'm, about dangerous. To, I'm about to make a business decision. So yeah. I asked her, I was like, what are your thoughts on marriage? Because this is probably going to happen sooner than later. This man said, I'm going to make a business decision. Yeah, I will make a business decision. Come on, you sound like Alex Hermosi. <laughs> This man walked in and said, I think it would be a good idea if we got married. <laughs> Yo, it, respect. It, it, bro. it had to, it had to what happen. You, hold on. How did you take that question? Honestly, was I waiting. was like, you were already my husband in my head. Aww. Like, I wouldn't have gotten this far with That's you so cool. if I didn't already believe that. Yeah, she she was just like, I was waiting for you to ask because yeah. she, we're both just super intentional. Yeah. So, like, August. By March, you guys are married. Big wedding, small wedding. You guys small. really small. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Sixty people. Again, we're very focused on small numbers, mm -hmm. community mm -hmm. based, but mm -hmm. but just making sure that everybody feels Immediate seen and family. enjoys the experience. Potluck, yeah. potluck. It was food. literally like Kenny Rivers DJ. People. Yeah. Because I didn't want to have a DJ because I'm so critical. I was like, Kenny, you got it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it sounds like your guys' relationship is a testament to what happens when you work through the issues you need to work through mm -hmm. or at the very least are self-aware enough to that Awareness I got is issues yeah. right. to work through and then knowing what you want mm -hmm. right and and the, the the last part which I think is a big one is you guys didn't go to the same church but you were still somehow connected which means you were involved in community yeah, relationships well, networking I, yeah, right yeah. so I think that's a huge that's that's the, the the piece that a lot of people are missing right now mm -hmm. is that no one wants to be outside. Yep. Everybody wants to be inside on their phones. But if you're out and about, if you're pulling up to joyful noise, if you're meeting people, yeah. just by sheer volume, you're increasing the the number of people you're coming into contact with. And you don't right. got to depend on social media yeah. to, to connect you with people. No, nah, that's huge. And I, I think that's that's the crazy thing. I told you offline, but I'll tell them here. Like I met her at Kenny Rivers uh, music video shoot. Mm -hmm. And it was just crazy because, I again, I was working and she was just supporting and it went from there, and yeah, it was just a great opportunity that wouldn't have happened if I was just at my church. Because mm -hmm. for honestly, like six, seven years, I was like Cinderella, man, like in at my church serving youth ministry. There was a time I was teaching at my church, mm -hmm. serving at my church as a youth minister. I was there the whole day, never outside, and I would DJ at, at church events. I wasn't doing any other events. I was just tucked off. It was a blessing because I was able to get trained and chiseled. But since I've stepped out, like. That, me stepping out, that's how I got in touch with Caleb. That's how I got connected business-wise. Mm -hmm. That's how I really got my relationship going. I, I really stepped out, but it was essential that I biblically and under, uh, like identity-wise knew who I was. That's good. Because that's what happens, too. People step out, and they are, they're just lost. Yeah. And they get yeah, caught up. The in other, oh, I'm sorry. You're good, baby. I was going to say, in the other element that um, he was like is a non-negotiable, when we were talking about how he felt, he was like, I need to go to therapy before we start dating because mm -hmm. I want to make sure that I'm not That's bringing good. any baggage mm. into this relationship with you. And so, yeah, like a message to anyone who's considering dating is making sure that you are self-aware, making sure that you are healing from those things that maybe you don't speak about um, and just getting the guidance from the Holy Spirit to really heal from those things because whatever you don't deal with in singleness <laughs> is going to show up in marriage That's and right. it's going to affect that person that you love so much you don't want to hurt them and sometimes it does happen but you want to minimize um that probability if you will yeah that's so good um yeah. so ha ha bringing that full circle people coming up pulling up to joyful noise yeah they need to they need to be around people they need to get outside of just their little bubble um it sounds like there's this delicate balance you got to have of like yeah. man don't, don't pull up just trying to yeah. you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. just yeah. for that but at the same it's time, it's gonna happen. It's gonna, gonna happen. happen, and you guys will probably be stoked if someone pulls up and meets their wife there. We we did a thing that I'm gonna bring back here called Singles Night. I don't know if you ever saw okay. the streams. So this, get, I need a co-host because they get me in hot water. So this is what we would do: <laughs> is we would pe people would uh, send their super chats, uh -huh. and I would live pull up their Instagram. And I would pull up their Instagram and I'd be like, all right, we're just going to look at your Instagram. Like, uh -huh. Instagram is the biggest dating app <laughs> in the world, as far yeah, as I'm yeah. concerned. Yeah. Let's pull it up. And I'll be like, all right, what's your bio? Say, okay, boom, you got a Bible verse in your bio. Yeah. Right? Okay. <laughs> you ain't got no so thirst funny. traps. Right? Yeah. You, you're not at the beach or yeah. the dude's not got his shirt off in every photo. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then I would get very specific. I'd be like, all right, cool. So you have friends <laughs> on your Instagram. That's great. Uh -huh. But then I'd be like, okay, uh, you're within a healthy BMI, mm -hmm. which would then get you know that get tense All right, right? Yeah. and then uh the hey if you if you if you you know western <clears throat> beauty is like you're within a healthy bmi 
you have a symmetrical face and there's some degree of novelty to your look. Yeah. If you got those things going for you, you're considered beautiful in the Westerns and you're attractive in the Westerns. So I'd, so I'd go through those variables, which would then be weird. <laughs> that if sounds I, if dangerous. I, if, very. if I'm pulling up, I could, I'll could. i roast the guys. You will slow. Right. I'll roast the guys. Hey, you need to go ahead and get into the gym, bro. Like you can't be, you know, I'll roast the guys. But when it be a, a woman, I'd feel That's really tough. uneasy. That's yeah. You become yeah. Ruslan yeah. Samuels and next Yeah, time. and I was like, listen, I'm, I, I got to tread lightly. So I'm going to get a female co-host to come yes, in balance. so that when we pull up a woman she could tell her hey sis like you got you got to get to the gym you know, who he needs? You know? the lady from uh social proof oh uh donnie yeah, donnie, yeah, yeah. Donnie but but yeah it, it man. but i said i had to say so one person got married a couple got married because they met and then and then the, it would end with all right this is so and so mm. slide into her dms if y'all interested i am not responsible for what happens <laughs> yeah next. and so a couple people went on dates and one couple just got married matter of oh, fact i met i met their mom that the dude's mom at uh at a restaurant she came up and she was like you're ruslan like my, my my husband met his wife because you did the singles night stream and that's they've been crazy. married for a couple months and thank you crazy. you know so i think that's a real need people got like yeah. people yeah. really need to meet people yes. and social media you don't really know but if you get outside of your network see them in a natural yeah. element yeah. And that, mm-hmm. that's definitely what this is it's really like a, a gym it's exercise it's a playground for people to actually connect and you know, maybe you maybe you've been wanting to just uh, talk to this girl, and she's so entrenched in doing her church work. It's like, all right, like come out to this event. Mm-hmm. Let's actually just hang out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's see how you conduct yourselves around strangers. Other people, yeah. Let's see how you uh-huh. dance. Yeah. <laughs> Let's yeah. see all that. Do you know the music? Let's see, that let's I see how you don't dance. Let's see how you don't <laughs> dance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like okay, you know what? Like for her, like she said, she didn't know how to dance or didn't really I feel did. good about dance. But dating but me, like there's no. He loves dancing. She so was on stage sneezing at a uh, Miles Minnick uh, concert oh, after a while because I'm showing so her how to sneeze and stuff. <laughs> But but yeah, this is all it is. It's just it's really a safe space for people to be normal in a Christian sense, but yes. like actually socialize out of a environment that is super duper controlled. Yeah. Because it's like if you remove all those elements of control, that kind of naturally happens. Because like I said, I did ministry for a minute. It was really hard to manage teenagers. Like I was working with kids where, man, I gotta have three or four people watching this kid because he's gonna step out and go wherever. Mm-hmm. But when this kid's at a uh, football game and nobody's watching him, how's he going to act? Right. You right. know, and, it, and nothing changes. We just get better at sinning when we get older for some people because yeah, yeah. you just, yeah, you got eyes on you. So I'm like, mm-hmm. put these people in this element, pray for them, keep the word of God in the center, keep right. the music godly, and then from there just be aware yeah. and make sure, like, it continues to remain safe. And, yeah. When yeah. is the next Joyful Noise event? February 24th, next Saturday. Okay. Do you, are you planning the one after that? Yep. March 23rd. I got all the dates on the website. We're we working it out for the rest of the year. Okay. What's Just, the website? We'll link it up below too. Yeah. Thejoyfulnoise.com. Uh, noise with a Z. And uh, social media, all platforms, The Joyful Noise. Dope, man. Well, thank you guys so much for coming in. This was fun. Yeah, Thanks thank you. I'm honored. Us. Appreciate right. you. We see, according to the Bible, that prayer is extremely important in terms of us being transformed from the inside out when we get aligned with God's will. For the Christians watching this channel, I want you guys to implement these spiritual disciplines in your day-to-day life. And the only way I've been able to do this consistently is through writing down my prayers in a prayer journal that does a few things. One, it allows me to reflect and come to God humbly and ask him to move on my behalf and two it allows me to document my prayers which ultimately helped me remember the very things that i was praying for and see the hand of god tangibly in my life when he answers them so i would urge you consider writing down your prayers it could be in a blank notebook it could even be on your phone or you could check out the one i personally designed and used from my own quiet time and spiritual discipline that i think will be a huge blessing it's the exact structure and system that i've used for years to pray and be more consistent in my spiritual disciplines. You can pick yours up today by clicking the link in the pinned comment below. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace.